Yeah, we're just here. We're doing it. That's how we start out. Randall Lotus is here. Hey, everybody. He's in the building. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. Uh, I was just saying, I just saw Midsummer. Yeah. How How was that? I like it. I like him, Ari Aster, the director. He's just okay. kind of. It's a even if the movie's not great, it's a very particular type of film. And like no one else is going to make that, so I appreciate that. So like, is it him just? trying to is there shit in my teeth no no you're good okay i felt like there was and one time i sat here for an hour and a half with a piece of uh almond in my mouth so uh, that's i tried to you know but now that's disgusting <laughs> it's endearing people like that but like, also oh, disgusting look, at, look yes. at this guy with flaws well midsummer so like what even is let's like look at the trailer because i want like i because I saw Hereditary, the same dude who did Hereditary, and yeah. it kind of felt like the person that was doing Hereditary was like, let me make a horror film that's like not a horror film. Not for the sake of doing that, but like kind of. Do you know what I'm saying? It felt a little bit like, let me just throw them off and then make a quick... Like, it, it felt like it was two movies. Yeah, it kind of rides the line between like family drama and horror. Yeah, half the first half was a straight up family drama. Yeah, I would say this one, it's like a mix between... A relationship drama and uh-huh. horror. Uh, okay. Have well, you seen actually, his, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I mess with it. Have you seen his uh, first movie, his short film? No. What was it? It's called "There's Something Strange About the Johnsons," and I'll give the briefest synopsis, and you'll totally understand. What I'm so it starts out with the, it's a black family, and there's this the son uh, is like a teenager, and he's masturbating. And then his dad comes in, mm-hmm. and he's masturbating, he's holding a photo, and the dad comes in, and he's like, oh, shit. But the dad's like, oh, don't worry about it. Hey, you're a grown boy. Yeah. It's all good. Don't feel any shame. Do your thing. He's like doing his thing. And then he leaves, and you see the photo that the kid is holding is a photo of his dad. And it goes off the rails from Oh, there. my God. I know. It's, it's That's fucking insane. It's w- absolutely wild. And it's only 20 minutes, and um, Yeah. Holy shit. So I love that uh, that a producer saw that and were like, we're going to give you $20 million <laughs> to make a, a feature-length film. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, that's 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 a pretty good idea, though. Oh, was it on the... Hold on. I got to change out where it comes through. Because sometimes when you're producing this alone, you forget to put, hey, it should come out on the computer. Not the... There we go. Have one for it. Now is it working? Let's see. Nationwide is on your side. There it is. Okay, mm-hmm. good. All right. Let's let's watch this trailer. Kino check. Okay. I told you that I want to go to that festival in Sweden. No, you said it would be cool to go. Yeah, and then I got the opportunity, and I decided Look, I to do it. I don't mind you going. I just wish you would have told me. That's it's all. got the same music as uh, Hereditary, dude, kind of. Mm-hmm. The very you creepy. Out of the stupid yeah. relationship for like that guy. That dude, he's everywhere, bro. He's gone so much further than I ever expected. Ever. I did not think he was going to go. For people who are just listening, what, what is the guy's name? I forget. He was in that movie, like, He was the in Banner Snatch. Banner Snatch. Uh, he was in the Millers. That's right? where I first saw him. I was like, oh, it's that kid with the weird-ass <laughs> eyebrows. Yeah, he was supposed to have a giant dick in the Millers. Yeah, he was also in um detroit he was in maze runner but he's like yeah he's like an will ap- polter will polter he's got crazy eyebrows british guy yeah he's a weird looking dude he i looks, think he's just, like pretty young too he looks good with the with the blonde hair though oh shit yeah he's a year younger. yeah he's, oh shit he's 26 oh, we're the fuck same age. you dude you piece of shit already killing it killing it man god damn it you gotta it's I, people who have one very distinguishing feature it's always looks better you know the barber strands and the nose oh you're saying his distinguishing feature is his his, his crazy it, curved eyebrows? eyebrows yeah they are pretty uh yeah i actually yeah you're right holy shit and he definitely has had them worked on to make them look more curved like he flexes it exactly yeah, yeah he's he, he's in the gym just figuring out how to make his eyebrows go up more well, that's a big thing about, like, uh, I remember in college, attraction theory, that there's people who... Yeah, what is that? It's like people who have incredibly normalized faces are considered attractive by more of the general population, but okay. they're, all, they're never usually considered extremely attractive. It's like, oh, yeah, you're pretty good looking. But if you have, like, a more polarizing face, then a lot more people will find you very unattractive, but a lot other people will find you very, very attractive. Yeah, it's like the it's, it's, it's like a love me or hate me situation. It's the thing where it's like, oh, they look so 
off or strike. It's a, it's that word striking. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, they're striking. It's like they stand they're, out. They're like, they're kind of ugly. But you, but there's that ugly hot thing. There's a lot of people, you know what I'm talking about, who like they're ugly hot. Yeah. Where you're like, if you look at them, you're like, they, sh- I shouldn't be into them, but there's something about their snarl that I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm into this. It's kind of, yeah, it kind of reminds me of like Chance the Rapper's voice. I hear that. I'm like, that should yeah. be unappealing. Yeah. I, I, I didn't like it at first. Yeah. But that's then, how I felt. And then I was like, I love this. This okay, is one of my so favorite. You said it's called attraction theory? I think it's called attraction theory or like polarization of attractiveness. Attraction I can't exactly theory. remember. Maybe it's a pickup artist blog. Who knows? <laughs> it was in the game. It was in the game. Attraction theory. Okay, what the... Oh, dude, it might just this, be... This is... It might right. be a part of attraction. You know what? It's probably Wikipedia. Where's similarity slash attraction theory? Or okay, like normalized see. faces. Yeah. The people like or attract others who are similar rather than dissimilar. Oh, okay. So this is a little bit different. Hmm. Maybe I got the name of the thing wrong, or the specific thing. I kind of fucking ugly. Can we look... Being ugly and hot. Un- unattractive. Ugly. Attractive people are likely to marry attractive partners and unattractive. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, I don't think this is it. Yeah, it's not working. So, uh, Randall doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. I don't know what I'm saying. I'd like, no, I no, just no, shoot no. the shot. Honestly, no, you I'm shot the built, shot and it worked. I'm built for a world <laughs> pre-Google when you just <laughs> say things confidently and, and people believe you. And I'm like, dope, dude. All right, next, uh, let's move on. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a liar. That's what yeah. it's called. <laughs> I'm a really good liar. <laughs> now I probably well at the end you'll be like, oh, I know what the theory was now. And yeah, then, but I mean, regardless that that that's just something that that seems to be true. Like I, I at least feel like for me, a lot of times you'll see someone and you go, oh, I like this one thing about them. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of them just being normally. You know, it's very funny. I um I had a girlfriend once mm-hmm. who we were like looking into each other's eyes, just you know, loving moment, and she says. You're so attractive in a very um, forgettable way. <laughs> she said that to me. She said that to you? Yeah. What the? F- what did you say? I didn't take it bad because I... Uh, you sh- you should have. Because <laughs> she's very honest. And I was just like, I mean, I, I see what you're talking about. I, I don't think I have a very distinguished face. I'm, oh, I can very like much blend in. So she was just like, you're just uh, traditionally attractive. I don't think she meant tra- – maybe she meant traditionally, but, uh, yeah, she was just like, yeah, you kind of, like, I don't have any super pronounced features in any way. Dude, she was abusing you emotionally. Potentially. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. How did that end? Uh, not great. It was a very short <laughs> – re- it was a very short relationship. It was, like, long? three months. It's like this guy, this guy in Riverdale. Like, his, like his face is – there's a picture – his face is, like – too fucking square. Yeah, it looks like he was computer generated. Yeah, exactly. Like, look at this. You're like, dude, like... The jaw is too strong. There's something about him that I want to just punch him in the face. Like, I'm, I'm sure he's a great guy, but you know there's certain guys you look at and you're like, I just want... I don't know why I want to, like... I feel like people say that about you. Yeah, they do. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. So I'm uh, just deflecting You're projecting that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. onto this guy. Yeah. But some people have really punchable jaws, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's some dudes that are, you know, really good looking, but you're like, you've got to... Your, your jaw is so pronounced that now I have more area to to hit you know i feel like i'll look at somebody i'm like oh you seem like you'll be mean to me that's what yeah I'm that this guy looks like he'd be mean what's his name charles melton see he looks like he'd be mean but i think in person they're he's probably actually like one of those guys that is nice in a way we we're like oh my you're you haven't had anything bad happen to you okay yeah. nice it, it is infuriating when you meet somebody who is um like handsome and well-spoken and all that and they're very nice you're like wow i and you're kind of mad that they're you're, a good person you're like you're just better in every single way than yeah me. you're great you're just i can't even be i'm a less i'm a i'm a lesser human than you are that's always felt like i remember growing up there was always that like Oh, all the popular kids, they're going to be balding and unsuccessful after, col- mm-hmm. after college or high school. And then I'm like, I check Facebook. I'm like, oh, no, they're all killing it. They're like bankers and lawyers or like successful like, artists. They're all successful. And I still... Yeah, they're cause charismatic back then and they're charismatic now. It's like, fuck. Yeah. So like, there's no, like nothing, there's nothing to do. I mean, there's no justice in the world. It's really unfair. Yeah. And I think people, the, the earlier they figure that out, the more um, they can be okay with it, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the first parts is just being like, okay, the life life is going to be unfair. Mm-hmm. So you, that has to be like your baseline. Like you got to wake up every day and be like, I might get shit on today. And that's the norm. 100%. That's the norm. Today, trying to take a train back from the Hamptons, it was full. It was straight up, I mean full. So I was like, all right. Met met some guy named Tony. He was driving the bus. He's like, "We're gonna drive you to the Babylon." 
got on, watched Stranger Things. It was good. I love that your example of life not being fair is no, 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 coming back this from is not, the Hamptons. This is not, this is not life being fair. I'm just saying, like, some Damn, person dude, could be like, I, I, I couldn't even get a direct line back no, no, from no, no, my mansion. No, 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 listen, 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 listen. That was me trying to be like, some people, I know some people that would freak out about that. Like, th- that is, and th- me giving that example, that's like, Number one, an insane thing to give an example, but I was like, what, what can I pull from today as something you get pissed off at? Uh, yeah, you can but only you know, live in the world you live in. Now, listen, I've had a lot more worse things happen to me, okay? But today, I was like, oh, let me pull something from your life. And sometimes you pull things that sound so fucking white that you can't even believe they just came out of your mouth. Look, sometimes you're just doing well. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm, I'm riding up people's coattails. Uh, no, but it's like, Cause so I, so I was out there and I, um, one of my friends was having a party. And so I, I, I went out there and like, show that, check that party. I'd never been to the Hamptons before. I was like, all right, let's check this out. Um, and I was telling you before we started, like worst type of, of person I think is out in the Hamptons, mm. just like most entitled and never had anything bad to them. Like what I just said probably sounds a thousand times worse, uh, like, they probably say things a thousand times worse than what I just said and try to make it seem like it's a, it's they a big deal. They just, like, lack self-awareness. Oh, yeah, dude. Self-awareness, no, like, emotional intelligence to realize that all their problems, like, are not a big deal. And they're, it's, they're all the, – everyone out there, they all call their parents by their first name. That's odd. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. I'm like, that's that. – th- it's that kind of white person. And we were at this club, and it was just – Seas of the same dude in button down shirts and girls in some kind of white like romper. Mm-hmm. And I just went like, fuck, all you guys suck so much. I forget that those types of people exist sometimes because I feel like, you know, you just have your own crew. Yeah. And like I have mine. That, But I remember I went to this bar to meet up with some girl and I was waiting there for her to show up. And it's a bar I don't typically go to. And almost everyone was white in a type of like unbearable whiteness that I don't interact with mm-hmm. and everyone started singing Wonderwall at the exact same time I can't, dude and I, I can't like, with those people oh my god I haven't been here in, in a long time there's some white like I mean it, I see it more with m- like my race because that's all I can really understand that aren't uh, like aware of the tropes about their own race that they maybe shouldn't play into mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying and so when I see, see, I'm like, are you guys, do you guys not understand how insanely dumb and white you guys look right now singing Wonderwall, which is not even that, like, but part of me is very doing? envious of just completely delving into your archetype and being like, you know what? Yeah. Playing it up. Yeah. I'm white as shit. I love Wonderwall. I love, I love it. And I'm just going to go ham. I mean, they look truly happy, truly happy. Is, and I was like, I want that. I think so. I I will say I think the less self aware you are, the happier you probably are. Ignorance is bliss. Yes, yeah. a thousand percent. So like those people that aren't self aware enough to I mean, most comics are very self aware. So that's one of the reasons why we do it. But it's like you, those people that aren't that can just do that and they don't think like I look so dumb right now, and they don't go like What is my identity? Who the fuck am I? I don't do anything. I'm not like I'm. Doing, I'm going to happy hour. Anyone who like gets excited about going to happy hour, I go like, dude, you don't have like anything going on. Like, I'm sorry. And people will say right now, some of you guys that go to happy hour, like that's awesome. You can be excited about happy hour, but don't have it be the most exciting thing of your week. You can be excited about it, but don't be like, I can't wait for Thursday's happy hour just because that's my event. I don't know. Get a book, play some cards with friends, have some hobbies, anything. I say that, and you have no hobbies. No, I mean, neither, I no. I like used to have a ton of hobbies. Like I used to dance all the time. I used to really dance. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of dance? I would um I would do hip hop dance, street jazz, African really? dance. Yeah, oh, shit, I was dude. like I was a really big dancer for a long time. Like yeah. in um in high school, I started doing it at this thing called Spring Dance Concert. It would be like three months of preparation, and you would. Be in student choreograph pieces. And then in college, I was uh-huh. on a step team, like Stomp the Yard shit. Really? Mm-hmm. Wait, are there videos of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, where? Where There's can I a, find this? You can probably, if you look up Sankofa Williams College, that was the name of the step team. And I have like, yeah. Like cor- this? Um, S-A-N-K-O-F-A. Uh-huh. It's, um, it's this bird from Ghana. And <laughs> that's where the name comes from. That's cool. But um, yeah, I was like a choreographer. Stomp team? Step team. Step team. And it's normally, it's very interesting because I went to like a very small college in the uh, Northeast. 
uh-huh. Williams College, but and we don't even have frats. And stepping's like a really like traditionally black frat thing. Uh huh. Um, keep going down. There might be one of the ones I've. What made. year were you there? I was there, um, twenty eleven to twenty fifteen. But so was it this one ninth annual steady step in or um, wait try one more page, okay. we'll see what's up. Wow, but, dude, I, when's the last time you've gone to the second page of a Google search? Oh, rare. It's been a long time. Yeah, I don't even use Google search. I always use YouTube. Uh, okay. Oh wait, go down. Uh-huh. Um, that one. This one. I think that might be it. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Because we, yeah, we would host a um, um, yeah, skip forward maybe. Yeah, wait, actually, the first one. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, keep going forward there a bit more. This is the girls' team. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, that's, like, what their dance would be. Okay. I don't think ours we would... Don't give a shit oh, yeah, this girls. next one coming up. This is oh. the one I choreographed. This one? Nope, that's uh, more women. This might all just be women. Oh, no, this is me. Oh, see, is that you right see, there? front right, bottom, oh! on the floor. Yeah, I'm stepping. Bro, you're getting it, man. Yeah, man. And, um, yeah, I did this for four years. Oh, let's go. I was, what was my title senior year? I think I was squad, squad captain. I help people, um, learn all the steps. Oh, dude. Yo, you're killing it. If anyone wants to look this up, it's a 10th annual steady step and forward step competition. <laughs> okay. It's on the Williams College Sankofa step team page. 44 subscribers. You got 44 <laughs> subscribers, okay? So you guys should subscribe to their page as well. Yeah. It's awesome, man. I how did that. Um, how did it feel doing dance? Did it, did it? Oh, I loved it. It was like, yeah. I honestly was planning on trying to become a professional dancer after I graduated. Because I also was on the hip hop dance team and I was on the contemporary dance team. Okay. Okay, so you really like dance. Yeah, and I would come to New York in the summer, and I'd go to Broadway Dance Center, and I would just like... Oh, you'd kill it. All the time, and I would just look up dance videos. I remember there's this group called the Kinjas that I really like. It's a hip-hop uh-huh. squad. They're like all Filipino and South Koreans who are like... The Kinjas? The Kinjas, yeah. Kinetic Ninjas. Kinetic Ninjas. <laughs> and like Kione and Mari Madrid are these two choreographers I like. And yeah, I would just watch these videos all the time. I would dance all the time. Wow. And, these guys? Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, the twins who they dance with Beyonce. They're these two French twins, black guys. They don't speak any English, really. But yeah, that was like my life for a long time. Let's watch these guys real quick. Oh, yeah, I forgot they're on America's Best Dance Crew. And these are Filipinos? I think so. And they're mm-hmm. very, uh, have very precise movements. Yeah. Although they got a couple break. So yeah, very sly. Nice. Okay, they're like the um, very frene- not frenetic is that the right word? Uh, it's a schizo term. Schizo. Term. No, like there's a like popping and locking. Yeah, it's like very. Uh, st- it's staccato. Staccato. That's, that's the yeah, word. That's a good word. That's the word. Staccato. Staccato and flashes of legato. Yep. Ooh, the mm-hmm. beat where you pull. Ooh. Yeah, they have just the craziest control of their bodies, and it's like basically it's like a. Best awesome. of the dance world. There's like this guy Mike Song who's uh-huh. on it, and uh, they're yeah, they're just like the best dancers. So what yeah. happened? I actually i <laughs> I was at a Kanye concert. Okay, and um, I uh, I was smoking. So somebody passed me a joint. I smoked uh-huh. it, and from that apparently I got mono. And what happened was that the mono weakened part of my uh, nerve. And so now one of my nerves touches part of my brain that controls one of my eyes. And so it throws off my balance to a degree that I would never be able to be a professional dancer. Are you serious? Yeah. That's what happened? Yeah, I just got like completely sniped by mono. Holy and God, fuck. And God. I <laughs> the god He just like you're not meant to do this and boop, there we go. <laughs> That's I mean honestly of all the reasons to not do something it couldn't feel more like ordained from heaven than to get a disease that usually just puts you out for like two like weeks to ruin your ability to dance. Yeah, and it's forever. Like I have it right now. Like my really? my eye constantly shakes. It's very micro so no one shakes? else can see it. Okay, but you, do you feel it? Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. 
And so it's it's always just kind of vibrating a little always bit. Always just kind of vibrating. Like, is my, my eye muscles, like, just weak enough that, like, your eye normally makes some type of motion uh-huh. all the time, but mine's just slow enough that I notice. And so, yeah, it throws me off a little bit. Just, oh, not, shit. like, in day-to-day. Yeah. But, like, if you're dancing really hard, because, like, if I drink a lot, it'll yeah. I can notice it more, because, like, you know, you're just yeah, exactly. weaker. And if you get really tired, mm-hmm. aka dancing a lot, yeah, yeah. you notice a lot. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Dude, holy shit. That, um... So, like, do you feel it during the day, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it doesn't, time. but it doesn't throw you off. Not really, and I've gotten more used to it as time's gone on. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, still there. I can still take classes and stuff, but yep, it's just like a little bit uh, fucks with me. So the nerve is like touching part of my brain that it shouldn't touch. And how does mono do that? Appar- apparently, or like, apparently, just yeah, somehow like, just some like was extra aggressive or something. Yeah, but I thought it was just—I thought it was just a bacterial infection. Didn't know it is. I—I well, I don't know exactly. What is it? Yeah, I haven't wow. checked. I haven't checked back in with the eye doctor, but that's what they said. You didn't. Yeah, you weren't like. I mean, it, it happened, so you didn't really have any reason. Yeah, to... they said like, oh, you can like potentially you do like some type of surgery, but they're like, it's not worth it. No, I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do. Yeah, that. you're not gonna. It's also funny because I remember I met with this Broadway dancer or choreographer guy Mm -hmm. and he before even this happened he's like oh you you shouldn't be a dancer man (laughs) he just said that to me (laughs) i was like what do you mean he's like you should be a writer i'm like what he's like yeah man you you don't dance what yeah he just told me he said that to your face to my face i have a lot of people who tell me yeah bro it seems like a lot of people like to say shit to your face that's like pretty (laughs) fucked up and mean but they're right all the time yeah (laughs) so i'm like i can't even be mad at them they're just people just like to tell you the truth Yeah, yeah 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 okay so are you waiting for the next wait, the next moment where some random stranger comes up to you and they're like, "This is what you should break up with your girlfriend." You're like, "You know what? I gotta trust yeah, it." Yeah, I'm just gonna have like a bunch of like magical Negro janitors. <laughs> like, hey, young blood, you know what you gotta do? I was like, "Well, sure." Like, Either that or do. God will just snipe me again. It's <laughs> like you're actually not meant to be a writer, and like I won't be able to read <laughs> in like two weeks or something. <laughs> Holy shit! How did you feel when when it happened? I like, was. Were you really uh, let down? Yeah, I was. I had because I didn't really have any plans of like what i wanted to do not like my life would have been like i would have been a bad situation because yeah. like you know i went to a good college of a like yeah. good background but you know that's what i wanted to do and then i'm like kind of like aimless in terms of goals and stuff like that how old are you when you happened i was 21 so it happens you figure it out uh are you like in denial at first? Do you try to figure something out? Like, yeah, what's, try, what's the process? What I would through? like try to strengthen my eye. I remember I would like put um, like basically like self made eye patch and try to like do exercises and like cross my eyes and uncross them, just do all the really? stuff. Really, but it doesn't work. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I would go yeah. to dance classes with it on. They're like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "It's just like a style thing." <laughs> like, yeah, for a while I was really trying. Like, fuck face tattoos. I got an eye patch. I got an eye patch. I was just like the ultimate hipster. Damn, and so, but when you were dancing, you noticed yourself being off step and all that. Yeah, like I would fall down sometimes, and like, fuck, I would just like not be able to see exactly what the choreographer is doing. That's good you accepted it though. Yeah, did I mean, it take you, you just, a while or? Nah, it was a slowly just like uh, this probably is not gonna happen because it's already like a long shot because like I started dancing late, like fifteen yeah. is pretty okay. late. Even though like some people do it, like my one of my favorite dancers, Alvin Ailey, who that's the dance theater named after him. I think he started yeah. when he was like. 17, 18. And we also had like similar body types because he's not a typical dancer type. He was like a burly dude. Yeah. And I was like bigger back then. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, I can be like him. But uh, no. No, God sniped you. God sniped me. But Random. for the best because now I get to do comedy. Yeah, now which, I get to do this. Yeah. So well, after it, did you, is that when you decided you maybe wanted to do comedy or what? Kind of, yeah. I um, I always liked comedy and I like, even while I was interested in dance, I did like one open mic before I graduated. But um. No, I was working at this ad agency when I first moved here. I was an intern, and I was okay. also, I think I was the only intern who didn't get hired. But uh, <laughs> but while I was there, I was just like, start doing open mics. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, let me just see if I can do this. And then you, you were like, oh, this is actually working out. Yeah, I was just like, oh, at least I could, I was like, I could see myself getting better at this. Like certain things I've tried, I'm like, I'm not going to be good at this. But like comedy, I was like, maybe. You're like, I can figure this out. Yeah. And that guy had said you should be a writer. So. Yeah, I don't know why he said that. 
I like we. I he's yeah. It kind of seems like some weird. He was a very like the closest thing to. He had like a really oracle vibe. To yeah, him. that is that's exactly. Yeah, it's a very oracle-y thing to say. Yeah, he it's lived like, he lives in an old uh, firehouse <laughs> and shit. And I was just like, that's supposed to have been closed down for years, but there was always one light on at the top of it. Yeah, and he's yeah. you know carrying a lantern yeah. like this. Yeah, like, yeah, and he was a thousand. <laughs> yeah, he was a pretty old guy. Yeah, but um, that's so funny though that he did, had he seen anything that you had written, or is it no. just from him literally listening to you talk? We were just talking to each other, and I don't think I come off writerly. So I what was a like, wise ass dude! Yeah, it so, was also like a black thing because he's a black guy, <laughs> and he's like, we need more like intellectuals out there. I'm like, I don't think you know like what my thoughts are <laughs> they're not incredibly in he's just like man we need more black writers so i'm just gonna tell everybody yeah, yeah. Actually, no, I, it wasn't about you at he all. tells it to every person <laughs> <laughs> he's like man you should be a writer he's like what a, <laughs> every <laughs> black, young black person who every comes young through. black guy yeah the guy's like i'm about to get drafted for the m he's like no no no, 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 no. <laughs> you should be a writer you should write he's like but i don't know how to read you gotta yeah, be a no, writer no you gotta Learn, be a writer hooked on phonics yeah exactly then become a writer Go, come on man we need more he just wants to read a book where he just wants all his books to be like and this is another black writer I, I inspired this guy. Yeah, if you get, if you tell everyone to be a writer, eventually one of them will be. He's like, see, I told you. So that guy was, he was selfish, actually. Fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck But he was guy. right. He was very he right. He was right. I don't know. I'm uh, not talking to you. I've gotten a writer vibe. But some uh, things that you've put, like, sometimes texting back and forth hmm. or things that you've put on your Instagram stories, it's just a very specific way of thinking that I went, that I go like, that's very unique and fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I remember you. I remember one of the first things I. You know, sometimes with people, you you. That you imprint like the uh, first, experience or, or association that you have with them. Mm-hmm. Either like, oh, this is how I think they're funny, or this is why. Uh, this is when I w- went from them being someone on the outside to because I feel like there's different circles of. Uh, of relationships with people, mm-hmm. there's like the there's the acquaintance, there there's like the just met, then the acquaintance, then the we text every now and then, then like we've actually chilled and talked about some shit, and like you get through oh and the oh I think they're okay, I think they're funny, oh I think they're really like I tell other people about them. Yeah. I remember one of the first moments that I that we I moved in some of those circles with you was when you I don't remember exactly what it was, but you posted something on your story about like. Uh, remixing um, Martin Luther King Jr. with like trap songs or something. Do you uh, what it, do you I, what I it remember. Was? I posted something like that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember it was such a specific joke that I was like, "This is really <laughs> fucking funny." And I remember I responded to it on Instagram. I do remember. And you we started talking to that. back and forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. and it was one of the first times that we had actually spoken for more than like you know five seconds. Yeah, and I remember thinking, "I'm like, no one's gonna like this." Yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel before I do anything. Like, yeah, no, no one's gonna like this. How did you feel when you when you did the uh, ASMR for white liberals? Were you- oh, I thought that was gonna suck. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like it was just in the back of my mind. I hadn't made a video in a while. So for people uh, listening who um, don't know uh, Randall from this video, Randall posted this video on tw- uh, it was on Twitter, right? On Twitter, yeah. And then it like pretty quickly, like within a day, within a day, like, blew up. like blew up to like a couple million views. Yeah, it had like three million something. Yeah, and got him a shit ton of followers and also allowed him to put out more content and you, oh it you, straight up like changed my entire career yeah, yeah and yeah. and you were already at the daily show right yeah i was but there you were, like interning or were you doing i was a researcher there okay yes yeah, so i wasn't a writer i was just yeah i was a researcher because i'd been a researcher at my last job uh-huh and so uh, what's a researcher like do for it kind of varies in between jobs because like the last job i had i was a researcher on this hip-hop documentary mm-hmm. but for that i be, like i wrote the outlines to the episodes i came up with the questions for what's the it called re- um, I forget. They were deciding between names while I was there, mm. but it's going to be on AMC. It's based off um, this book by Shea Serrano, okay, and uh, the hip hop yearbook where they pick he picks the song he considers the most important hip hop song of that year and says why. Interesting. And so they're doing the same thing where it's like, okay, we're picking like five years, saying, well, this is the most important song given like the socio political context around the song, the history of the artist, and all that stuff. Interesting. Yeah, I, it's probably it's coming out this year, probably. It's the hip hop yearbook you said. Mm-hmm. The rap yearbook was the book's name, and I. Uh, okay. If you look up rap yearbook AMC, they'll probably it'll probably come up. But yeah, that's the original book. Uh, it's a really okay. cool book. Really cool art style. Do you remember any of the rap the uh, rap songs that he? I gave? think Juicy was 1994. Um, I remember uh, they had what's it called? 
Gold Digger for 2004. Or it might, it might have been G- either Gold Digger or Jesus Walks for 2004 with Kanye. Oh. I would think maybe Jesus Walks because I think, I think it, it talks about Iraq in there too, right? Yeah, I know. I think I know for the or show. Or it was in Jarhead, maybe. <laughs> one of the, yeah, it was definitely Jarhead. <laughs> it was in Jarhead. I don't think it talks about Iraq at all. It was just in Jarhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's this. Yeah, there's the military chant. I think that's what the Jarhead producers like. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I was doing that, and then I became uh, the Daily Show. Reached out through LinkedIn. No way. fucking way. Yeah, it was actually wow. crazy. Wow, yeah. especially as a comedian, like we don't use LinkedIn at all, ever. Yeah, and so I actually ignored the message on LinkedIn because I thought it was really? like spam. You thought it was a... that he texted me. He's like, no, hey, for real, like <laughs> it's one of the guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, holy shit. He's like, yes, yes, I would. And so I did the application process. So you hadn't met him. You had no idea. No idea. Yeah. Damn. And, and so, and then, well, yeah. So the ASMR thing. So the ASMR for white liberals is like this two minute video where uh-huh. I just like sarcastically like make fun of, yeah, white liberal people. Probably a lot of people out in the Hamptons that I was chilling with who think they're not racist but are. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just yeah. like yeah, just annoying people that are on your side but not really. Yeah, yeah. and not. I think it's because Get Out just came out around uh, the time okay. or like a little bit earlier. And I was thinking about that a lot because I'm like, yes, dude, that is my life. Like, as a black guy who like, grew up in the suburbs, I'm like, there's something that you're always, yeah. like, a little uneasy around certain types of white people. And it's very hard to place what it is. It's really? Like, yeah. And, like, that whole movie was, like, him being like, something's up. I don't know exactly what it is. It's, but it's really something. weird talking to you for yeah. some reason. But I cannot verbalize it. So it was like that for you growing up all the time? All the time, yeah. Because were you, like, the only black dude Pretty in a much. lot of your friend groups? Uh, yeah, there's like no black kids in my middle school, none at my elementary school. I would go to this thing, Jack and Jill, uh-huh. which is basically a club for black people, more like upper crust black people who aren't <laughs> around that many other black people. Oh my God. So you meet up and just like do activities and like rollerblade and shit. <laughs> and just to, just to meet other black kids? Straight up, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Damn. What Talk about, uh, it's like... <laughs> You're doing so well that you need to like, find other black people that you're also... Yeah, it's a real also, indictment on yeah. America <laughs> that if you do get that to you do well, level, that like, it's like there's, oh, only there's one no one here. Yeah, exactly. Why? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why, why do I, we have to go out of our way to find other rich black people? Yeah, yeah. exactly. What did it feel like growing up being the only... Like, because if, if you were the only black kid in your school, mm-hmm. like, did when did you become like, cognizant of that? Oh, I mean, definitely pretty early on yeah because my parents are very like they're very much focused on like we talk about black history all the time oh really like yeah my dad used to read um us excerpts from malcolm x's autobiography when we were kids really yeah shit like that oh shit so they're very much on yeah they're both poli sci majors they're both like very Ah, okay just like politically act involved sound very smart yeah Yeah. oh yeah my dad's a but literal genius shit and um, mom's also incredibly smart very smart people and so, so you were made aware of it. And then do, do you remember feeling like an extra pressure or feeling, did you always feel like the other because of that or what? Um, yeah. Yeah. You're just like, uh, I know it's, it's less of like, I don't belong. It's more mm-hmm. of that. Like, I know people always notice me. Like I you can't just okay. disappear into the background. Cause yeah. like, Oh, it's the black kid. Yeah, it's always like, oh, all the friends, and then R- Randall's black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like everywhere you go, they're like, oh, there's a black guy, the black guy, black guy. So you always, yeah, uh, you just always feel like eyes on you all the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then that probably gets tiring after a while. Yeah, it does because yeah. you just kind of want to like disappear sometimes. Although I was think I was thinking about that. It's this very loose theory because I mean it probably is, doesn't make much sense. But I think about it in terms of performance at least i'll just say keep it to me because mm-hmm. i've I always felt like relatively comfortable on stage yeah and i feel like because like when i get on stage i'm like oh this is just yeah i'm always being looked at so i'm kind of comfortable with being looked at in this context too ah uh, yeah yeah it kind of prepared you for it because you were you were always already being paid attention to yeah i was it's, it's my theory i'm like why are black people so good at entertainment there's a bunch of reasons but uh okay. black church is a big part of it but i was like yeah this might be another part of it like you're always just kind of performing you always are aware that people are looking at you Mm -hmm. like you're not yeah like like i don't when i go out i'm not thinking about people looking at well the only reason i'm thinking about people looking at me is because i'm taller than everyone else (laughs) so they're aware of me Mm -hmm. for sure but not in this not in the way of something negative could happen because of it do you know what i'm saying yeah yeah like on guard exactly i'm like people aren't gonna 
like call me a giant and it's a racial slur or is not, someone's not going to follow me around a bodega because they think they know all tall people steal or some shit like that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's just like yeah. a, a constant, like slight pressure around you, which is just being a minority. Yeah. But I forget how I get there. I was talking about it. Oh, and, and then I was thinking about, um, yeah, in middle school, I remember I had this friend, this guy, Nick Cobb, and we would just walk around all the time and mm-hmm. just like make fun of everybody. And I think that's probably where my sense of humor came from. Yeah. For making it's, fun of people. Yeah, just like that, and that guy in particular, he's like probably one of the funniest people I've ever met. Yeah, there's always the person that's that's not a comic that is the much funnier than all the com- comedians you know, and you're like, he's what made me want to do comedy. Yeah, he's the funniest person. I, you know, what's funny. I was talking to my brother, who is a, um, he's like a business guy, because uh-huh. he's also very funny. And yeah. I asked him, I was like, oh, would you ever do stand up? And he said, uh, I have way too much self confidence to ever need to do that. <laughs> And I was like, God damn. Damn, bro. Snipe. Wait, yeah, everyone's just sniping you, dude. God <laughs> damn. That is true. Fuck. That is, uh, that is very true. That yeah. we are way, very insecure. And that's half the reason why uh, we, we do this in general. But going back, because I just want to wrap yes. up the thought with the ASMR thing. So, yeah, I, um, so, yeah, The Daily Show, got that job. I was there for a while. I would pitch a lot and, like, make... Mm -hmm. Um, like segments and I think that's part of what made me like raise my profile a bit yeah and then I made that video and then I had like a bunch of people like reach out to me and like check out my stuff and be like oh we like you Uh and then I got an offer to do this pilot um, that Colbert was producing and so I told the people at Daily Show I was like oh like you know I'm thinking about leaving just because like, yeah. I like it here obviously but I'm getting the opportunity to potentially be a writer I need more money and yeah. they're <laughs> and I need more, more cash yeah. but and then they're like oh like you should you know just, we'll give you the opportunity to be, become a writer here. here like you seem like you might have potential and so I did that application process they approved said no to the pilot and yeah and I've been doing that, and then I've been yeah, I've been a writer for like a month now. How's it been going? What's uh, how, how, what have you seen change? Um, in in terms of what? How do you feel about your career? And like like how has it changed? Did you see yourself becoming a writer on a TV show? No, no, no. Not I don't ever really expect things to work out. Which why not? I don't know. I'm a very cynical guy. But where do you think that comes from? Uh, I don't know. I I truly don't know. It's very odd. I've always I've always been very like nervous and kind of cynical. Even from like when I was a little kid. Do you remember always being cynical and nervous? Yeah, my parents would even talk about it. They're like it was very odd. You're like always you're always kind of like skittish, uh, which is odd because like I had a very loving family. I had a very uh-huh. good upbringing. But I was yeah. I'm is your always, relationship with your parents good? It's good. Yeah. I, I have this like weird like overly uh active fight or flight response really yeah interesting but i don't know i don't and it's also just like i don't like to be like yeah you know what i deserve this i never think i did like deserve anything no i know what you mean it's like it's 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 trying it's being ultra humble i think like it's a lot easier for people to be like i don't deserve anything so that when it comes you can kind of feel good about it instead Mm. because if you think you deserve something you don't get it that leads to you being upset or let down yeah. So instead of it's almost like a good defense mechanism because you go if it's I don't, probably a big part of the yeah, defense mechanism. You go if I don't think I deserve anything, then I don't get let down when shit doesn't go well because you're like, well, I'm a piece of shit and I didn't, I wasn't gonna get, gonna get anything anyway. Yeah. I think I I used to think like that. I mean, I still kind of do, but I I like try and choose to be like more positive about shit. It's good to be more positive. I've been yeah. and I've been trying to be more positive as of late, and it's been good. Like. You How's it going? What have you been doing? Just it's just changing your thought pattern. Just like yeah. it's that idea of like if you go into a situation, hey, what if this turns out all right? You know what's so bad about thinking that? Uh, instead of being like, I got to look out for yeah, like oh, this is gonna go badly. I'm gonna bomb the show, or like this yes. date's not gonna be fun, or yes. blah blah blah. Just going to it's like, hey, it might be okay. Yeah, and I think like that very small change is dating very is difficult but big for me. Dating is great because you can just go in and be like, I know I'll make this fun. So worst case scenario, I have I talk to some excuse me stranger for an hour and a half, and I know I can keep the conversation going, and then I'll dip. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like yeah, yeah. the worst thing that can happen is like oh we don't mash and life peace. goes on. Yeah, and I'm still a writer on the Daily Show. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in terms it's actually uh, in terms of career uh, how I feel. Yeah, I don't. feel feel like a huge difference okay like i get paid more which is great yeah so d- have you know like because now were, were you doing a before you were a researcher did you have a different job yeah i will so i had the amc job where uh-huh. i was the researcher there for a while but before that i was doing like 
PA, random PA jobs. Uh, I worked at Postmates. Okay. Delivering food. So you were doing that, and then you yeah. started to work jobs that were actually in the industry. Yeah, just through vague um, connections from because I started making videos, mm-hmm. like these little sketch videos, and I'd put them in like festivals, and then people would like them, and then you know you just meet people, and they're like, "Oh, I'm like, hey, do you ever need anyone to like hold a light or grab stuff for you?" And yeah, they're yeah. Like, oh yeah, you can hang out on set, and that's kind of what I would do. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was never strategic. Like this will lead to. Not really. I was just like, I don't know. Because I went to sc- I studied like political science in the oh, school. Oh, so you tried to follow your parents a little bit. Yeah, and I've always just like been really into politics and like power dynamics I think are very interesting. How so? Um, I just, I don't know. It's kind of like how I view the world, which <laughs> a lot of people don't like. I mean, I want to hear it. Just like um, um, power influences literally every interaction you have. And I always think, like, in terms of social issues, like, okay, like, what's the power imbalance? Is there a way to fix that power imbalance? Like, um, uh, I'm trying to think. Like, what's a recent... I don't know, with Me Too and stuff like that. Okay. Like, I remember when it came out, like, my thought process, like, people were talking, like, rape culture and things like that. But where my mind immediately goes is, like, all right, what is keeping people, like... What is disempowering people? So I'm like, okay, if you work at a job and you're getting harassed at your job, that means you might, if you're not getting paid that much, if you don't have much bargaining power, if your health insurance is tied to your job, then you're less likely to report stuff or feel like you can control your life or even fight back against these people because you're like, what if I lose my job? Then, have like my entire life comes crashing down. So my whole thing is like, my response to me too is like, man, we should have more labor unions and universalized health care and things like that. Oh, you think big picture on it? I guess. Yeah, yeah. And it's this- it's kind of like um my my dad used this metaphor for something else where it's it's instead of fixing a wound, it's like putting a band aid on it. Yeah. And so like you're thinking about how do we stitch up the wound, whereas other people are like trying to put a band aid on a, a still bleeding wound. Yeah. And I'm not saying like rape culture doesn't exist or no, no, things no, like that. But it's just like, I don't think you are, yeah. Yeah, it's just like where my mind goes is more like all right, like every time I'm in a not every time I'm in a conversation, but like I I very often think I'm like, all right, what's the like social dynamics of this like group I'm in or the, like when I'm watching a show I'm like all right who, what's the audience like who's the performer like what like do wow this, really yeah like I look at like the space I'm like all right what type of space does this connotate and I just think of like all these things that influence how you're seen and how other people see you how you see other people and uh, yeah it's just like I think it's very interesting and in, and it applies to like a lot of different situations Either like interpersonally, even like in just one on one relationships. How is that? And I think about it like in terms of like, yeah, masculinity too. I was thinking, I'm kind of, I'm, uh, tell me if I'm ranting or not. Dude, this, I honestly, someone hasn't talked like this on the show in a while and I love it. So, like, I, tell me all the different shit about power dynamics. I think yeah. people are going to like this. Like, I've been thinking a lot about masculinity because, uh, like, I've been mm-hmm. talking to people at work. Uh, this one guy at work. I don't know why I have nervous about saying his name. But, <laughs> Just call him Jeff. I was, yeah. I was talking to this guy at work about um because I I come off to a lot of people as like effeminate sometimes. Yeah. Or I get that. um yeah. a lot of people think I'm gay. It's actually very funny. I was on the yeah. train last night and this guy comes over to me, this black dude. He's like, Hey, I you're I saw you from, on Instagram. You're a comedian, right? I'm like, Yeah. yeah. He's like, I just want to say I am so happy. That there's a black queer comedian <laughs> representing <laughs> us in that space. It's so rare, and I'm very happy. And I was just like, I, and it broke my heart to say, I'm like, I'm actually not queer, but I do appreciate it. Like, I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That happens a lot. You're like, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> letting people down. Yeah. Like, letting people down by being straight. <laughs> yeah, everyone thinks I'm queer in some capacity, which I, again, I get, but it's very just funny because I was like, I have to burst the bubble. Yeah. But I was thinking about it because I'm like, all right, I feel very, I've always felt very comfortable being my type of masculinity, the like slightly yeah. more feminine. And I think about that, I'm like, all right, why is that? And I think about like my family and like coming for money. Okay. And it's like, all right, if someone is like trying to be really masculine, I think masculinity is just like an approximation to power. Like money, it's like getting close to power. And so if someone doesn't, if, I feel that, like, since I know I have all this um, 
money behind me. Yeah, like um, your fam- like you ha- like your family has money. You never you never have to worry about like being on the streets. Yeah, and I don't have to worry about and like then having like resources and access is so much a part of power, which again is tied to masculinity. I'm like, yeah. I makes probably makes it so I can feel more comfortable being potentially more feminine because like I feel like I have this power behind me. So like to be extra masculine is like unnecessary. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? You, you don't need to like peacock because it's like people say the most alpha thing is not having to prove that you're like alpha because yeah. you already know that you are. But it, that's what I'm saying. But it's easier for me to do that. And from nothing that I've done, per, not from nothing I've done, but from like a lot of it's done for me that by you my parents. Born into it. Yes. Yeah. So it's like I have much more freedom to fuck with um like gender in whatever way i want to i see i mean i don't see you as someone that messes with gender dynamics really yeah. i just think it might be how you come off as you don't come off as a a very um like masculine over the top machismo dude which which yeah, is, I'm not saying I'm like you know yeah. like I'm gender I'm I'm wearing a pretty like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. presenting pretty straight and all you that stuff. You can be stuff. gay in that. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can be in gay yeah, whatever you, can you want. Be gay whatever the fuck you want. But I guess I just yeah, it's like my loose theory but it's like yeah, like why do I feel comfortable like being able to just like do this with my hands or just Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, be blah. the the limp It's, a, it's all extremely stuff. minor in terms of like the vast spectrum of gender and like masculinity, but it's just something I think about. Like, because there's a lot of people I know who have a lot of, um, again, like resources and power behind them, and they uh-huh. seem to be or have had an easier time fucking around, or not fucking around with gender, but like just yeah, being more not, not, not macho, playing not into the macho. super masculine. And I think that's a big part of it. Well, I think a lot of there are different types of men that are can all still be masculine, mm-hmm. and I don't think a lot of people talk about that a lot or they're not uh represented as much like the the stereotypical arnold schwarzenegger ter- like that kind of man you know burt Re- burt reynolds those are two different types of but those represent a, two types of like this is what masculine is hypersexual vi- like hairy chest any of that shit or just like very macho buff go to the gym like i'm gonna save you not like knight and charming shining armor kind of guy mm-hmm. and those are some of the dudes that a lot of times us as boys were like told to look up to them but a lot of times we might not be taught that there's another man that just for whatever reason doesn't have those some some, some of those traits just aren't part of some guy's personality mm-hmm. and then he doesn't have to go oh does this make me less of a guy than because I don't play into them. Do you know what I mean? Do you, mm-hmm. I mean, you still probably feel in touch with the masculine, like testosterone side of you. Or- kind, kind of. It's I, 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 I honestly, I don't exactly know what ma- like when Steve's like, what's masculinity? I don't exactly know what it is. I know a lot of it has to do with anger. Because I remember this one time, I, I used to have like a huge anger problem. Really? I, I went to anger management when I was younger. Okay. But I honestly, a big part of what I think that is is just like. I think part of it's racism. They just see a black guy like me doing what other people would do, but it's coded as more aggressive because I'm black. You think that that's true? I think that's part of it. I also think that I was angry. Okay, so you think it was part... Who was sending? Who was choosing to send you to anger management? Your parents or like uh, some white person was saying teachers, you Teachers, yeah. Okay. Teachers at my school. And like the teachers weren't the best. Like I remember one of my teachers had like a Confederate flag in their office. And I would no. like, oh, I'd be disciplined and I'd have to go to their office. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And they're for real. And it's weird to be like, you like, I, don't, I remember he was like, I don't understand why you're so angry. And you're I'm like, like did did you, this the, whole school sucks. The <laughs> General <laughs> Lee is like behind you, bro. Yeah, I'm like a black dude in Florida. I'm like, of course I'm pissed all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I remember like, I've, this one time I was playing football and I got extremely like raged okay. and like I like hit a guy really hard and I was like yelling after the play mm-hmm. and um, this guy's like oh Randall's finally acting like a man and that like sticks that stuck out to me I was like what the like out of yeah like the only time I'm like someone's calling me a man is like when I'm like being really violent Sorry about <laughs> to kill someone yeah 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 I uh... it's interesting man that because. Being violent or or having that set that, that is a very that that is a masculine thing. I yeah. would I would not 
uh, quantify or I, I would not represent it as a feminine thing. Anyone's going to say being rageful or ma- like that's masculine, yeah. you know? So, y- yes, it falls into that because testosterone can lead to like all of that stuff. But I don't think it's what makes a man a man. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I totally agree. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of times. But you're right. A lot of times it'll be presented as like, oh, now you're being a man. And I mean, you you can sometimes when I get really angry or or I mean, I, I don't I don't I've never really been a very rageful person. I've really? never ha- I, I'm a, I'm very much quick. Like I don't get very mad at someone. You seem very just, excitable. Yes, very easily excitable. Yeah, if you hang out with me for more than five minutes, you're like this guy goes all the way to the top immediately because my fight or flight is kind of also always on too, mm. which is why I've had issues performing sexually, which we can talk about oh, no. later on. Do yeah, you yeah. have blue chew? Dude, we talked about this. We did this talk was, about this. Yes. This was what connected. This was what made me like you as a ah, dude, man. I remember. Do you yeah, remember this moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were. This is one of those moments that I'm telling you right now. I was like, Randall and I are closer now because, because we, we talked. have performing anxiety. Yeah, performance anxiety. We connected yeah, around that, like that, two that's dudes. So funny. I do remember that in that in that bar. Yeah, yeah, that open mic. Yeah, we talked about Blue Chew, which you know is not a sponsor of the show yet, but I would love for them to be, and uh, I want to try it out. It's very popular. You haven't it's, used it. It's good, right? No, I've I've used like him. Oh, I'm trying same, to have same some, exact yeah, thing. it's great. It's still Denafil, yeah, and it yeah. works. But yeah, I've, I've had performance anxiety, and I think it's par- partially because I've always been just like activated and aware, and mm-hmm. all, all very in my head. And then all my first sexual experiences were in public, like in a car, not like out, uh-huh. but like that's still pretty public, yeah, very public. Really, yes. all, all your sexual experience. First time I got. Had first time I had sex, and the first time I got a hand job was like in the hallway of my school. Whoa! Yeah, this high school. High school, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, I, man. I, I only I didn't have any like sexual anything really until I was like twenty one. Really? I like I had my first kiss when I was fifteen, and then I had like two more kisses before that. <laughs> but yeah, I was like I was pretty just conservative with it. Was it? Do you think it was your choice, or do you think it was partially my choice? Because I was very like Christian for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super, super Christian. Wow, there's up. so many puzzles in the, in the in the or so many pieces in the puzzle of Randall. Yeah, man. I'm, okay. a, I'm a goddamn mystery. I'm a fucking enigma. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was like very Christian for a while, and I was like, I'm not having sex before marriage. I'm I'm dedicated, and I was like, not about it. Oh shit! And, and what what changed? It was just like a slow erosion. Mm-hmm. Like when I got to college, like I remember, yeah, freshman year, I was still like pretty into it, and I was like trying to cling on. But I remember Bill Burr had this bit. Where he said it's like he's playing um, that game where you push shuffleboard, kind of, kind of like shuffleboard. Yeah, and he's like, it's kind of just um, pushing it away, and you're like, in the body of the Father, in the Son, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and you're just like, and then just one day it's like not there. Yeah, um, and that's kind of how it was. But then it's funny because then um, after that went away, I was like, oh, I, just, I still don't know how to like approach women. And so that kept it going for like another two years. Was figuring oh, out just how to be okay. like confident, and and then dealing with the fact that, oh shit, I'm 20. I still haven't like had my dick touched. Oh, it I'm 21. I haven't had my dick. It touched. wasn't even that. It was more just like residual shame of the Christianity of like doing sexual stuff is wrong. Like even though I didn't oh. believe it anymore, it was like that was still there. Like being like <sighs> that shame sticks around for a long mm-hmm. time. That's why people get so anti-shame. I'm okay with shame in certain instances, but that kind of shame, like, definitely needs to, to not not be. I mean, Catholic guilt, dude, that lasts. That's were you like Catholic? Still, no, but my 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 family was. The Paladinos were, and you know, they're still. That makes sense. I the can, Italians, yeah, the were. Italians, dude, the Irish Italians, yeah. Holy yes, shit, double up for sure, dude. And so that's very much in it, and you can see it in my family in certain ways where it comes out, but. So you were you were you were like Christian growing up the entire time. Did mm-hmm. your family push on you like, hey, you shouldn't have sex before marriage, or is it no, one of the things that you glommed onto? That's the onto? weird thing is like they weren't like super gung about that. They're okay. just like, yeah, I mean, just you know, believe in God and yeah. come to church, and that's about it. Be they safe, weren't like yeah. super aggressive with it. I I remember I went to um, when I studied abroad. My mom, she was like, oh, just buy. <laughs> it's a stupid thought. She's like, just buy condoms in America, like. I don't for some reason, I don't trust those European condoms. <laughs> <laughs> just stockpile them here and bring them there. Smart, yeah. And I did, and I didn't use any. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so was, that's like the type of people they were. They are just like, yeah. Very open. Norm, very open, normal, yeah, yeah, progressive be safe. people. 
but it's actually funny. The my when I lost my virginity, mm -hmm. the story itself isn't like particularly hilarious, but it is funny that the person I lost my virginity to is now a porn star. Yeah, what? Which is very interesting. Wait, what? it's probably the best person I could lose my virginity to. Just like a very sexual, comfortable person. Just like, yeah, yeah, welcome. Here's what you do. Could you tell already that she was on the path to be a porn star? She was no. She, I mean, she was very sexual and uh -huh. like seemed comfortable in it. But she was like, no, she didn't like talk a lot. She was like a computer science person. Very smart. Very just like really. Yeah, I don't. I want to ask her so bad, like what her life's like now. You should hit her up. I you should guys have that connection, man. I should. She has like a decent amount of Twitter followers. I should just DM her. Like, just DM. Hey, her. it's me. Hey, what's up? Things have changed. Remember took when you took of us? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on with you? What's up, dog? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many dicks have you sucked? <laughs> it's a lot. I, it's uh, of course I watched one of the videos, and I got to say it's very fascinating to watch somebody. You slept with sleep with someone else. Oh, f I didn't even because I've think never about had that. like any type of like threesome or anything like that. So I was just like, wow, this is interesting. And so we're and she had sex with a guy whose porn I would watch when I was growing up. So I'm like, this is a clashing of my childhood and my young adulthood. What a mind fuck. <laughs> yeah, it was Jesus. wild. So it was many so different. Wild. You're like, I know his dick, and then I know her like pussy. I'm oh my god, it's all coming together. It was crazy. You were. And all the comments were like, oh, she's great. Oh, I hope she stays around. I love porn. I wish, <laughs> I wish I could have lost my virginity to her. And yeah, then you're like, I, was, I did. What's up, everybody? Yeah. Damn. And so when you watched her, were you like, oh, she didn't seem to enjoy it that much when she was with me? No. Huh. She, she seemed like she was having a good time, you know? Uh, okay. Although with, uh, you know, he's a professional and I will never, you know, I'm never trying to compare myself to a professional. You're right. Shout out Richard Mann. You're the best. Richard Mann. Richard Mann. I'm trying to get... Um, What's his name? Not Peter North. Uh, Johnny Sins on the show. Oh, shit. He's Bro. like the top guy right now. Yes. I need, like, I've been hitting him up in the, in the DMs, and sometimes, you know, they don't respond unless you have a certain amount. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, if anyone can hit him up and he gets you to respond, I want to get him on the show so bad. Johnny Sins. Johnny yeah. Sins. The world of porn. It's very interesting. It's I, an yeah. interesting world. I think I'm going to, I think I'll DM her. You I should. feel like she'd be open to it. Yeah, I mean, what, what would I've you... Known, yeah, it's it's pure curiosity. So, like, what, like, what, what would you DM her? Yeah, like, like hey, honestly, yeah, hey, I think up? I'd be like, hey, how's it going? I saw that you're doing porn now. I think it's very interesting. I was wondering if you wanted to catch up. Yeah. Not, yeah. Because it like, wouldn't even be like, have sex with you. It would just yeah. be like, hey, I'm just very curious about your life and, like, what's this yeah, I mean, industry you, like. You guys have a connection that can never... You have both experienced something that can never not be... Did I you don't know what I'm think she, to say? But like, she didn't know that you lost your. Oh, she didn't okay. know. Well, even then, you guys still did have sex. So there is some kind of you're you're already in the minority of people who she's had that. Even though with her, there's a lot of people <laughs> she's probably had sex with. She's you're still in the minority of in terms of the entire population. There's only a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand for her that she has had sex with. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, I, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm exactly. gonna do yeah, that up. Hey, this is not me hitting on you. I actually really just want to know what's going on. I see you're doing that. That's very interesting. Yeah, like let's grab. Coffee. I kind of want to buy a Pornhub hoodie. <laughs> I think it'd be so. They look cool, and like I had a show about sexuality the other day. And I'm like, dude, if like? I had a Pornhub, it's just the logo on the front of a black hoodie. That's tight. I remember I saw it for the first time when I was delivering for Postmates. I uh -huh. delivered a sandwich to Asa Akira. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like cuz she was working at Barstool Sports. Really? Yeah, and I was just like, "Hey, I got a sandwich for." Yeah, and this I is pretty tight. Yeah. This is tight. I would definitely And there's, there's another one where there's no uh zipper and it's just like bam in the front. Is it a little bit bigger? I think the logo is a little bit bigger in that one. Because I would. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Oh, that's the one dude, I, would... I want that. It's kind of. It's kind of tight. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're gonna get it though. I can't get it. God damn it, fuck, dude. You got. You got to get it. I, if I, you decide not to, I'm giving you two months. I'm getting it. All right. Fair. That's straight up fair. Yeah, and seventy dollars. It's not that expensive. Not that bad for, for a porn for a hub hoodie. hoodie. Like it, for a normal hoodie, you're like, okay, this is a little bit much. But for branded Pornhub apparel. It'd be you fun to do uh, to do late night and just have a porn of hoodies. It's just no one cares about what you're saying. Yes, exactly. If you don't like, acknowledge it at all, you bomb. Yeah, Vol yeah, Vulture's like, this edgy comedian did his entire set with a Pornhub hoodie on. Meanwhile, I'm talking about like racist <laughs> racism <laughs> and stuff in America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Don't mind the hoodie. Yeah, don't mind the hoodie at all. Shit. That's interesting, man. You lost it to it. So you went and you 21. Did you feel uncomfortable, like, knowing all your friends were already having sex? And No, I didn't no? really care at all. You didn't care? I remember um, 
I, I had this one other friend, and he also hadn't had sex. And um, we were both like, oh, it's kind of weird because I feel like we're not like weird guys, like at least not that weird. And like, mm-hmm. there's worse people than us having sex. I'm like, I don't know what it is. Like, how do you, we're just like, how do you initiate that? As that's the biggest part. It was like, we just didn't know how to like initiate that with women. And what's also interesting is we lost our virginities at the same exact time, we, unbeknownst to us. What? Yeah, I lost my virginity to her. He lost his virginity to his girlfriend. And the next day, we, as a friend group, Came had already together. planned to go to Six Flags. Okay. And so we're driving to Six Flags. And uh, I say, I just look at him and I was like, hey, man, I lost my virginity last night. And he just looks at me. He's like, me too. I was like, oh, shit. And we had a beautiful day at Six Flags. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What an amazing. It was a great. It was like the most wholesome way to. I'm surprised you guys didn't maybe react a little bit crazier because that's very one in a well, thousand. Well, his girlfriend was in the car. So I'm just oh. like. Oh, like, just like be a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could be like, we fucked. You yeah. got fucked. Yeah, you <laughs> fucked her. Oh, Hell oh, yeah! Shit. <laughs> Pull out guns. <laughs> Fireworks outside. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, scratch Get arrested. The door. <laughs> <laughs> officer's like, hey, dude, what's going on here? You're like, we both fucked last night. He's like, he's like, oh, oh yeah. And we start shooting this guy too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's in the back, like, what the fuck yeah, is going up. on? He's like, you shut the fuck. <laughs> you shut up. This is our moment. This okay. Is us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Men, <laughs> and that's when you fully experience being masculine. Yeah, and that's when I'm like, maybe I should cut this back a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let the feminine side show a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, let's, let's, let's relax. Yeah. Okay. So back to the power dynamic thing mm. with being, but you don't feel like. Do you ever feel like you have to turn on your masculinity at all, or or because it's such a hard thing because it's not. Like, dude, you are masculine. You just may, like, you're allowed to be a dude and then push more towards seeming a little bit more feminine. And yeah, that's definitely where it's from. It's more like, I'm like, definitely like, no one's going to, l- except for that guy on the subway and like, yeah. people online for some reason. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not like in danger, like having like major, like, um, like crises about it. Uh huh. But it is something, I don't know. It's, it's odd. I, yeah, how does it make you feel when, like, no, honestly, I, like, I'll look in the mirror uh-huh. and I, I feel like I look way more masculine than I feel. Like, I don't feel that masculine ever. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a dis, like a dysphoria thing. It's just like, I feel like, like a little boy all the time and is like kind of like a lilty guy. I feel the same way. Yeah. Do you really feel the same way? Mm-hmm. I, I I think I look more masculine. The exact same thing you said. I look more masculine than I feel. Mm-hmm. I, I, I sometimes feel like I have to fit into... Like, like people ha- expect you to be like yep. this because you look like that. So I play into it more. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if it's... And now I don't know if it's more my personality or just what I've created because... That's what people expected. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, look, I, I have very masculine tendencies about me. A lot of what I do is, but I do think sometimes I play it up because it's maybe a little expected. Like, sometimes I think people are taken aback when I'm not actually a douchebag. Mm. Like, if you talk to me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you saw me or what, I don't know what your, like, what was your first impression when you, when, before we talked or anything? I mean, uh, yeah. tall, handsome guy, uh, probably going to be like bro Yes, Yes, uh, you were right about. Yeah. But like potentially annoying. Yes. Potentially okay. annoying. No, and I got it. No, no. Yeah. And that's fine. That, that's, that's totally fine. You're like, okay, he might be. And then people will meet me. And then after they, if they talk to me for more than 10 minutes and have a conversation like this, they're like, oh, it's not just like all tits and ass in his head. Yeah. It's 95% of it. You know, but- honestly, where it comes up a lot, or like if I ever have fear, it's when I'm dating. Is because I feel like they'll be like, let down by how, like, especially like when I'm in my like, very intimate personal life, I mm-hmm. feel like I'm not that masculine at all. Okay. And like, I have to live up to like being like, oh, I have to be a like leader and, you know, like be the man in the relationship. But I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I've, I would love to be, um, I mean, this is a small thing, but I'm like little, being Little Spoon's cool. Oh, dude, Little Spoon's the best. Um, like, Ladies, yeah, Little Spoon's Being scared to like, yeah, cry in front of somebody. Like, all, w- when I am actually worried about it, it's typically in like intimate relationships. Okay. If I'm ever like worried about like needing to be more like masculine. How have you uh, dealt with that? It's just, again, like kind of like learning how to just chill and be like, hey, this is how I am. If you're not into it, that's totally fine. That's cool. But I'm not going to change. Yeah. Yeah, like this is... 
has it has it caused problems? Has a girl ever met, like? Have you had a lot of? Do you think it's more in your head, or have you had people be like, "Oh, you're not that like women that you've dated," and like, "Oh, you're not that masculine," or like, be I've, more? Have you ever had someone say like, "Be more of a man"? No, I've I I can I've had like dates, like one off dates, where I can tell they're like, "Oh, I thought you were gonna be different. I thought you were gonna be a bit more mm-hmm. tough." I and this this is probably like a change in um, t- topic slightly. It's actually I feel like I often fall into the trap that a lot of men do. Where like a woman will start to mother you, you know? Because then like then like the women who do stay around, they're like more into like a softer guy. But then they can start taking the role of like being much more of the leader in the relationship. Yeah. And then I feel like they'll naturally, maybe not naturally, but just like the ones I've dated will like start doing a lot of things for me that I didn't necessarily ask for, and then like potentially like a little resentful because I'm like not giving the same back. Hmm. And this is less in masculinity, but it's just more of like a dating thing I've noticed. Like, Interesting. Like if you heard, have like female friends say that, like oh, I feel like I'm like my boyfriend's mom sometimes. Yes. Yeah. But I think people like to play that character, like to be the mothering. I person. think they want to be. I think in different relationships, peop, there's a certain role people like to play. I they agree like with to that. be. They like to be the mom. They like to go off and and um, be their own person, but then be able to come back to them. They, uh, I like, um, I like doing spontaneous shit with girls. Like, that's the thing that I like doing. Hmm. Um, like, and it's, it's never in the moment, but it's like if, if a thought comes up or like whatever, I like doing, like, if there's ever something that goes like, oh, that could be kind of weird. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's like fucking figure it out. But I don't, I'm not like a big going on vacation kind of guy. Oh, I'm um, not a vacation person. Yeah. Not a, like, it just is not in my mindset right now. Uh, I like fixing things for girls. I definitely like doing that. Like, if a girl has something wrong with her sink or uh, anything in her apartment, like putting up. Like, I went to a girl's place once and her light bulb wasn't working. And I was like, I got it. And I just reached up and I changed it for her. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, we've been waiting for, you know, like a tall person, like a month for the super to come do that. And I was like, I'll do it. And then I did it. And then it is fun to feel useful. It feels nice. Damn, that it does feel nice. It feels nice to just, I mean, you're, and you're helping them. And I mean, also, like, look, this is not the main reason I do it, but. Usually turns girls on when you do shit like that for them. So then they're yeah. like more likely to want to fuck you because you're like, oh wow, he did something for me. Now look, that's not the main reason why I've done it, but I know that it helps. Okay, I know it helps. Do you do you approach women? Do you like? Are you active in your uh, pursuit of women, or do you wait for them to come to you? Uh, girls don't usually come to me. Really, and I've always been surprised by that. They, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. This is something I've always been like because I'll see girls approach other guys, and I go, why don't they do that to me? I always do you th- what do you think it is I don't like every now and then a girl will but it's never the one that you want and mm. usually she's like not hot and so you're like okay fuck god damn it um, even though I, I, I have been talking to some guys about this uh, and, and I don't know it's probably I don't know if it's the same with dudes uh, like for, for girls but usually the girls that are a little bit less hot are a lot more fun to have sex with mm-hmm. and just in general a lot of times because they have to have a personality and you have to like try whereas like a lot of times a really hot girl she's just like I'm hot and then you have sex with her and you're like this is kind of boring that's interesting so I mean what, I've never what slept with an unattractive person but okay. I can see where you're coming <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say they're fucking ugly <laughs> but uh, yeah. no but I don't I, back to what you asked me I don't I don't know why what it is I, sometimes I think it's hard for me to think about how I come off to other people mm. because in my mind, I'm like, I'm the most harmless dude ever. That's because that's like what is in me. I'm like, I'm very harmless. I've never gotten in a fight. I don't like hurting people. Like I be, I'm, I like being a dick just because it's fun to me because I know deep down, like I don't really mean any of it. So it's really fun to be like mm. being a dick or a douchebag is a character that I get to play because I know people expect it from me. And it's also a very fun character that I'm very good at. Do you know what I'm saying? But it is a funny thing where you're like, you're playing, if you're playing the character so well to someone who doesn't know you, you're like, no, oh, that's just the guy. It's just me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm okay with them thinking that. And then if they get to know me more, they'll go, oh, he's not. And there's also, you know, hours of me talking online that people can actually know what kind of person I am. But, oh man, that's something I never think about. Yeah. It's like people who, I never, like with like tweets and Instagram or doing podcasts, I never think about like anyone's actually going to hear it. So at any time it actually happens, I'm like, oh fuck. Does I've had to fuck up relationships for me. Really? Or a relationship. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I was dumb. It was on my part. I talked about 
problems I was having with this girl that I was seeing on, on the podcast. And then, but you feel f- like you couldn't talk about it to her. Yeah, because it was like I don't know how I felt about her, and mm. I didn't know if I was into her, and it was weird because I was already kind of in it, and so I was talking to Tori and her mom about it, and then one of the girl's friends listened and told her to listen. And I was like, do not. And then she did. And we figured it out because I told her, I was like, I really liked, like, that I would just know weird plays because I was in a weird mindset where I didn't mm-hmm. know what I, how I felt about it. But it definitely it screwed it up for a little bit. It's funny. I've had the um, somebody who the, I went on uh, two dates with this one woman. Uh-huh. And uh, then she, at the end of one of the dates, ran away. It was very, we, it was like a long date. And then she's like, hey, do you mind if I run away? I was like, wait, what? And then she literally runs away. I was like, what the fuck was that? Wait, what the fuck? I know. And then I was... a fairy? Were you on a date with a fairy? She's a very interesting person. And uh, <laughs> That's a very I, nice whip. <laughs> I was on another podcast and I like told this like a longer like story of what it was. Uh-huh. And then she reached out. She's like, hey, I heard uh, you talk to me about all that podcast. Want to go out again? I was like, wait, what? And this is like probably like nine months later. And, uh, yeah, and so we, like, started going out for a little bit after that. Oh, shit. Yeah. This podcast got you late. Podcast got me late. <laughs> Fuck, man. It, yeah. I hope this helps that as well. Anyone out there? It's going to uh, probably get more uh, guys into me approaching me on the train. <laughs> That's, I have a lot of dudes hit me up, too. And it, always, it makes me second guess. It's made me be like, am I gay? And I just don't know. Because these dudes are... Dudes will just, I mean... True, yeah. Dudes will just, just take their, swing their shot. Take their shot. I got. I have multiple gay guys that are like, if you ever want, I'll suck your dick. And I'm like, bro, you keep offering. I'm going to get... Uh, like, You're just saying this magical one world that yeah. you could live in. It's like, why can't I just... Yeah, you're like, what am I What's wrong doing? with me that I'm straight? Yeah, for real. What's what wrong am with I, me? So no girl's ever been like, please let me suck your dick. And this guy's like, if you ask me to come over, I'll do it right now. And I'm like, what am I? Fuck, God damn it! <laughs> Although I'll say, like, as because I'm like tw- I'm 26 now, uh-huh. and like women that I I rarely have dated anyone who's younger than me. Like they're almost always the exact same age or older, and <laughs> they've always been younger. For me. <laughs> really. You, you, got, you got that daddy beard, you know, you seem like you'll take care of people. <laughs> Except my last girlfriend, she was like eight, ten months older, but everyone, all the other girls I've been dating now have all been younger than me. D- d- doing the Leo route. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying, you know? Yeah. 25 and below. 25 and below. <laughs> the new film with <laughs> Dylan <laughs> Palladino. 25 and below, baby. Yeah, I only date girls that are under 25. Also, we're always in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. Cold, tall <laughs> sex. But, uh... Yeah, I, I, like, recently, like, within the past year, I feel like every woman I, like, interact with, or, like, romantically, is so good at communicating, and are, like, very upfront. They're like, this is what I want, and um, this is, yeah, this is what I want. There's That's not, great. Like, the ga- like, the games have really died off in the past year. Have I don't you know if it's like have you been dating older women, you think that's why or what? I feel like it's partially an age thing and um maybe like I'm just like starting to s- I was about to say select, but I don't really like pursue people that much. So I don't know, maybe just like the types of environments I'm in and have these types of people who are very forward. What environments do you think it is? I guess it's more like artist types environments. Yeah, artists are very much more like willing to like trying to be confident w- uh, openness to new experiences mm-hmm. they want to take risks so they're like fuck it i want to say exactly what i want yeah it's like, yeah so i think it's a mix of age like hey, look i don't have time to mess around i'm not a kid anymore it right, is this true. what i want yeah i yeah. mean I, you know I'm, I'm 26 or 26 too right yeah yeah so it's like at this age i have found myself try to be much more open with people it's also, just not sex is so much easier too i mean it's such a cliche but yeah they're just like this is how i come do it and it's like two minutes and you're like why couldn't people do this for the past uh, exactly. only five years? I guess I've been having sex, but like, yeah, it's so <laughs> much more bitch. fun and better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. No, for real. As a man, it's like, dude, the girl just say, literally treat us like dogs. I, or just yeah. like give us. You know what? Give As a woman, a give me an IKEA like t- catalog, okay? Or what is it called? The um, yeah, like the, 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 the booklet, a manual. Booklet. Yeah, pamphlet. exactly. Give me an IKEA manual on how to make you come, and then that will solve all the problems. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. We, uh, we put together a table and an orgasm. Exactly. Exactly. Men need we we need steps. 
we're kind of dumb sometimes, and especially with sex, we don't know what we're doing with a woman. Give us an Ikea manual. We'll get it figured out and have, have time to go get pizza, too. And I was kind of, because I, like, heard about that when I was younger, and I thought I was like, oh, it's not going to be as, like, romantic or, like, interesting or fun. I'm like, no, it's just, like, really gets rid of a lot of annoying stuff and anxiety, and it was like, the, the experience is much better. Like, yeah, now... Sex is so much better. I love aging. It's great. Yeah, it's good. It's, I mean, stuff for your body dying, it's, like, really nice. Yeah, my knees are getting bad, especially yeah. after the stepping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I've been thinking about aging recently, too. Like, because I, um, I was with one of my friends who I hadn't seen in a while because she, like, went to India because she's Indian. Uh-huh. Um, oh, that's cool, yeah. That's what, yeah. I think that's what they do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she just, like, lived there for a little bit. And um, she's, like, one of my really good friends. Uh-huh. And she came back, and she, and she just, like, looks at me for a while. She's like, you've seen much older than when I left. <laughs> Again, people just saying Say, to my fucked face. up shit to your face. <laughs> I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, you kind of smile less and you move slower, but it's not in a depressed way. It's in a very just like, you don't seem like you're performing as much anymore. Yeah. Damn, that was actually really wise of her. She's very smart. She's a very smart person. We do. Perf- I feel like half of your 20s is learning to not perform anymore. Yeah, that's you know honestly, that's saying? something I've been like trying to do all the time. And it's very nerve wracking to do it because you're like, you think like, okay, if I stop like kind of like being this character that everyone like who likes me likes the character. So if that goes away, then like everyone's going to leave. Yeah. No one's going to like me for who I am. Exactly. It's like, okay, if I just put myself out there and people don't like it, then it's just me that they don't like. Yeah. Or not even like me that, well, yeah, me that they don't like, but it's kind of like, I feel like, oh, maybe like I falsely advertised to them, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they became this. friends with you because they thought you were this guy, mm-hmm. and now they realize that you're more... This other thing. Exactly. This more, like, if like, you hung out with thing. a lot of people because you partied all the time, and then three years in, you're like, I fucking hate doing this. And then it's like, well, we signed up yeah, for this guy. We signed up for a guy that does blow off of hookers' asses, okay? Not guy that likes to play Rummy 500, you know? Yeah. Like, come on. Let's figure it out. So yeah, it's a very scary thing, and it's like it's it's everywhere. It's with sex too, you know. I've been like with the performance anxiety thing. It's definitely like not gone away. So what do you think caused your performance anxiety? Um, I was like so worried, like I I like focused too much on wanting them to have a good time, and I know that seems weird. It's the same thing for me. Yeah, I'm like oh, I just I like I I don't want them to like think I'm bad or like make fun of me. Or like, made fun of me is a big thing for me. I, I always was like, they're going to tell their friends I couldn't get it up. And exactly. No girl's going to ever want to fuck me. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to be pathetic. I'm going to let them down. They're not going to want to see me again. All oh, blah, 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 blah. And all this stuff. And then, so that would make it harder to get erection. And it would make it like, I would like not come a lot of the time. Because I'm just like, I'm just stressed out. Oh, I this never isn't had that fun problem. for me. Really? I would get hard and then like come immediately. That's so Because I'd get so, fr- yeah, because my, my nervous system would be like, well, dude, we just got to do it. And then I'll just go, like, yeah. And then. I think that's only happened to me once in my life. Like really? coming fast. No, I've always been on the later side. And this, it's not like a brag because like most no, of No, it, it sucks just as much as coming quick. It's coming like never. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, and especially when you're like a guy with a woman, they like expect you to. And it mm-hmm. often like expects you to do too early. So if you don't, they're like, well, you're just not attracted to me. Or are you like, you know, like, what's up? What's wrong with you? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just nervous. <laughs> you're like, I just want... I really want you to have a good time. I really want this to go well. And yeah. that's like the least sexy thing the, in the world. The least sexy thing ever. You're like, I need, can you give me tips? It's like being a stand up. You're just like, before I start, I just, I really need you guys to laugh. Yeah. All right. Oh, I, God. I really, I need yeah. this one so bad. Guys, I really so need if you this could one. just laugh. I've been bombing a lot recently. It's like, oh, yeah. God, Jesus. Uh, yeah. So um, anyway, I've been dating recently. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, no one likes that. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was similar for me wanting the girl to, and then as soon as it happens, then you're always thinking about it. You're mm-hmm. hyper aware of if it's going to happen again, and then it just goes down that road straight up. And uh, this is where because I when I took uh, dick pills, I guess yeah, uh, it helped a lot because um, well, a I was just like whiskey dick get get rid of that. Yeah, Even though apparently you're not supposed to drink and do it, but whatever, it's fine. But we're young, we're young. When you're sixty, don't. But when you're young, you can do it. Um, but it helped a lot because I'm like, all right, look, I don't have to worry about like my body failing so I can like focus on my mind in this yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. And so like it was like a very good transition out of like this hyper fearful uh, period of sex where I'm just like scared, mm-hmm. r- residual uh, religious shame, all that stuff. And I'm like, OK, relax, 
relax, relax. You can do the stuff you want. You can do the stuff they want. They're here because they like you. Or they just want to have sex. Either way, they're, they're here for a reason. Yeah. And um, just chill. Just chill. This, should, this is supposed to be fun. And yeah, it was very good for that. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way to... It's crazy you're not sponsored by a dick pill company. Dude, that's... Pro- I feel like I'm I think it's going to be the first one. Yeah. And I've done it. I think that they're going to be the first one that will sponsor it, hopefully, especially because I use them. It's like, hymns, hey, dude, I already use you guys, so you might as well just throw me a, throw me a couple bones, man. Come on. Throw me some cash. I'm not talking about Roman on here. I'm talking about hymns, okay? Come on. Oh, I remember Roman. Roman was the first one I saw before him. Roman's still out there, too. And I feel That's, like Blue Chew's like the podcast one. It's like yeah, the Blue cast Chew. for mattress yeah. dick pills. It is. Yeah. They just send you a fucking piece of Trident that has Sildenafil in it. You chew it, and you're like, oh, my dick's hard now. Yeah. You know what's the best thing is when you think you're going to have sex, you take a dick pill. And then you don't. And then they're like, oh, I'm busy. I'm like, all right, well, I'm just walking around hard. Yeah, or just I'm going to have a headache in the next three hours because there's going to be so much blood in my head and no reason yeah. why. You feel like you're in yeah. middle school. It's like, wow, it's really not going away. Yeah, fuck. What is going on? I've, yeah, I'll get like jittery off of it. <laughs> I, re- I really will. Crush it up and snort that like, shit. Well, there's just so much energy in your because your body is like, because you also have the your mindset. Your body's like, we're, yo, we're obviously we're clearly have about sex. to have sex. Yeah, and then you don't. And you're like, I can't just watch. Seinfeld and pretend that I don't want to f- like fuck right now. Just jogging, your dick's bumping up yeah. and down all over the place. And jerking off doesn't work. It's still it's, it's still, still there. Be there. It's still there. It's it's, it's not it's not the move. Uh, you, I wanted to get back to it earlier. You're talking about uh, just because I so, no one had ever asked me this I, about not being approached. Mm. I, I think maybe no one's ever asked you that. No, not really. Fascinating. I think maybe it's because. Sometimes I think I might be intimidating to people if they if they just look at me. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, like what, six, five? Six, six. God damn. But also I think it's my like my like something about my face at rest is a little um, not on the nice side. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I can, yeah, and I can literally see it. So I think that might be a reason why. I don't know. But it's always baffled me because, again, when I talk to people, I'm like pretty genial. I like different people. So I go, oh, I don't know why it's not. But I'm not a. Bi- I'm also not a big like go approach girls, dude. Like last night I was at this club. Uh, like we said, I was in the Hamptons. My life's fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> and there are all these girls that I was like, they're hot, but I don't. I hate clubs. I hate bars. I think it's a horrible setting for talking to people. Mm-hmm. I truly, unless you're so wasted, and then you just go up and you think that you have game but in reality you're like what's up what are you doing and then I'm, honestly i so i that's i'm good at clubs not talking but because i can dance then oh. people just will approach me because like most people don't know how to dance at all yes so if you're just like kind of like confident and moving around people will be like oh hey what's up i'm just like no nothing you're just you know have a good time uh, like, okay so learning to dance will help you get laid but, oh dude yes and yes. i i think you Everyone should take African dance classes because that just teaches you how to like groove really well, uh-huh. and you can apply it to like almost any type of music. And you don't do the actual like ooh, ooh, by it. like you don't yeah, do yeah, the yeah, actual yeah. African dance, but you just like get the like feeling. Uh huh. Yeah. Just get a little bit like like the rhythm of the music in your body. Yeah, I think it's just like a very bass animalistic. People are like, I like a guy, I'm like a person who can dance. It feels good. Yeah. I've done a little bit of uh, when I was at acting school. I did a little bit of like African ish dancing. Ooh, just movement in classes? the movement class. Yeah, mm-hmm. it feels good, man. It when you feels, start when you start moving yeah. to like the the old drums, uh, like not bongos, but you know, like the bigger drums. And, yeah, and a little bit of like a. Uh, not Macarena, but the like a shaker in the background, just like have yeah. a little high treble and then the drums. If it, like, just like get that this, bass, like primal exactly, thing. you get this like animalistic primal movement, and you're like, we just completed a hunt and Kanye we're was, celebrating. Uh, yeah. Talking about that, he was doing some interview about like the music, like his um, Sunday service thing. Yeah, and he was like breaking down like what the drums make you feel, and it was like the 808 or like the 707. Yeah, it's like is that boom boom like hits you in the chest. It's like the very primal, it's the very yeah. sexual. He's talking about chakras and shit. But it, I'm like, yeah, it's like a very like base animalistic. I thing. mean, dude, they use they would use music to get people. Um, in the mindset for like war and stuff. That's what that yeah. drum was, and the little drummer boy, and that shit works. Like it, it, it truly does get you in a different. There are certain songs that come on. I mean, you know this with, with working out, but there are certain songs that come on that I go like, I could kill someone right now. Yeah, like I'm not going to, but I definitely. If you had, if you were like, you have to kill someone. 
pick one of these songs to do it to, this is definitely some Slipknot songs that I'm like, I, I was just about to get say, I, I listen to Duality a lot. Dude, yes. Oh, it's <laughs> the only thing <laughs> that's not going to break it. <laughs> yeah, no. So good. Fuck. You know, my first concert, actually, it wasn't a Slipknot concert, but it was a drowning pool. Uh-huh. You know, let the body Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was the first concert I went to because my best friend was like a prodig- pr- pr- prodigy at the drums. He's like 13. Oh, really? It was at the house of uh, oh, the Hard Rock Cafe in Orlando. Oh, shit. Next to Universal Studios. Yeah, that was my first concert. Damn. You know what also gets you um, hits you really primally is howling. But I mean like... Like, like I, you like, yelling? No, 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 no. Going like, ow! Like, oh, I've never you, done that. If you, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so, so dogs, if you start doing that with a couple other people, a lot of dogs will start just out of instinct howling as well. It's a very interesting thing to, to watch. That would be fun to do with a dog. I would, yes. That would make me feel Yeah, cool. no, just doing it with a bunch of people can feel kind of weird. But I've done it a couple times. One time it happened at a show. I don't know I don't know why everyone started doing it. I think another comedian had them all howl. Mm-hmm. Um but we were doing it with a dog uh, over the like on, on, on July 4th. There was a dog there, and they, they knew that the dog, it reacts to the howling pretty easily. And so there were like four of us all howling, and the dog howled as, where, as well. And it's, just, it, it's this weird thing where you're all doing it in unison that it unlocks. I don't know, I even know how to explain it, but it just it like feels right. Do you know what I'm saying? There's mm. certain things, that, even with the drums, there's certain things that you do that you go, I don't, there's nothing. I'm in like flow state. Exactly. There's nothing logical about this, but this feels, yeah. I would love to it do that good. with like a little tiny dog. Oh, <laughs> dude. It, it was a little dog too. Oh, it was that's like, cute. It was like, it just comes like, out of someone's Aah. purse. Like, Aah. yeah. <laughs> and another one's out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's how they found each other. And wow. so they knew that that was, that's, I mean, coyotes do it for roll call, apparently. So you howl before you work out? No, not yet. Oh, okay. I'm like, whoa, you're the craziest No, no, no. That gym. would be an insane thing to do. Yeah, but, I'm like, that's why people don't approach you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're just like getting to the club, and I'm just like, what's up, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants the fuck? What's up, like, guys? Oh, he's going to stab us in the face. They're knees. like, okay, yeah, that, that guy's Jeffrey Dahmer, for sure. Definitely doing that. No, howling's fun. You get a little dog to do it. That's cute. Got to howl. That's cool. I love to have a little dog. I want a big dog. I want like a great thing. That's too well. You're big. So yeah, yeah. That's why, more. I want it. yeah. <laughs> that's why I want it. That makes sense. I like. Uh, I love corgis. Yeah, very cute. I've never had a pet. Uh, never had a pet. No, I had a fish. Should have jumped out of its tank and killed itself. What? And that's when the darkness started. <laughs> <laughs> how did? How did it jump out of its tank? And- I was. Uh, I remember. I was like trying to clean the tank, so I uh-huh. took the top off and I like left for a little bit. And I came back, and the fish was out of the tank, just dead. I was did like, it have like a little note? It yes. was like, "I hate the food you feed me." Or? Florida sucks, dog. <laughs> I'm not staying here. <laughs> oh my god! Mm-hmm. Damn, what was that like? I w- I thought it was very funny. Yeah, how like, old were you? I was like eight. I was like, and you already thought it was funny? Yeah, oh, I was like, you had a morbid sense of humor early because on. Because I I remember my parents because I wanted the fish because like my parents were like we're not getting any dogs or cats or uh-huh. any of that stuff. I'm like, oh, can I just have a fish? He's like, and I fought for so long. I was like, fine, you can have a fish. And so it killed itself. I'm like, damn, I'm really not meant to have a pet. <laughs> <laughs> like I just shouldn't. Yeah, that's that God means, just comes into my life like, look, you're not meant to dance, you're yeah. not meant to have a pet. You're not gonna pet, uh, you're not meant to dance. You have a normal face. Exactly. You've been nor- people need to know that. You're not gonna be normally masculine. You're not yeah. an excitable guy. You're, you're not actually, excitable. You're actually yeah. more boring and Yeah, uh, your 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 baseline seems pretty um you okay, so you seem like one of those people that you're very chill. Um like when you talk to, when, like when I talk to you, I, I you're very um, not subdued isn't the right word, but relaxed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it seems like there's a lot going on inside your head. Yeah, and that's what it is. is uh, it, yeah, yeah, that's okay. pretty much it. That's what I thought. It's um, I remember. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of people say that to me. I remember my football coach said that to me. He's like, you are you like you always seem like you're thinking of something. Yeah, and I'm like, I think that's anxiety, but um, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I can't. I, it's really hard for me to relax and stop thinking about stuff. I tend to overthink things. I remember even yeah, in my first month as a writer, um, Trevor was like, uh, uh, "Yeah, you seem like you know you overthink things, man. Just go with the impulse. You know, it's comedy. You feel it in your chest, and then you put it out, and that's what comedy is." And I was like, "Okay, it's a pretty good. That's pretty good advice." Yeah, yeah. Damn. Damn. Also, you're like a world famous comic, so yeah. maybe it's easier for you. But I do know where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. But he is. I mean, that's probably the thing that he followed. 
that got him to where he is, you know? Yeah. It does, if prom, comedy is kind of one of those other primal things where it's like, the more you overthink it, we all know that we write, we like say a joke on stage or we riff about something, we're like, oh, it's funny. I know and it's then funny, you, And yeah. then you go try and write it out, and then the more you write it out and try and figure it out, the you feel it just turning the less, into stone. It just feels horrible. Yeah. You're like, this is, you're like, how did I turn this souffle into a piece of dog shit. Like, it's what so, happened? You know what's interesting? When I first started comedy, like, where I got almost all of my jokes, I had this one friend uh-huh. who, like, we would get lunch all the time, and we would just, like, with certain people, you know, you feel funnier. You just riff, yeah. Just riff, and that's where I get all my jokes. And she moved, and after she moved, I, got, I was, like, very bad for, like, months. Actually. Ah. And I was like, fuck, I'm, not, I'm nothing without her. She was your muse. Yeah. Oh, and um, so yeah, I I remember there was like a six month period. I'm like, holy shit! I was like, it's, I'm not funny. She's funny. Yeah, yeah. She brought what, the funny out of me. Exactly. So well, it's it's all about just being like comfortable enough to to just talk and like let it again, let it flow, let it flow. That's like that's one of the things. And when I talk to people here, it's like when people are tightened up in the beginning, it, the conversation doesn't flow as much because you're like overthinking even like where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? I remember, yeah, we were talking about, if not to reflect too much on the podcast, we're talking yeah. about the masculinity thing. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. This is just no, a feeling. Yeah, see, but it's good. It's like you, you, everyone is so scared to present an opinion because we, because now there's this feeling that like, if you present an opinion, you're not allowed to say you changed your mind. Yeah. Or you're not allowed to go, oh, that was a thought I was having and I was putting it out there for the purpose of seeing what this other person thinks about it and to talk it over. Yeah, like, I don't even know what exactly what I think. I'm trying to figure it out. Exactly. But you don't get to that point without being able to talk it out. I was like, did you listen to Ye, Kanye's album, before Kitsy Goes, uh, the, the track, I Thought About Killing You? Yeah. He was like, just say it out loud, just see how it feels. And now I'm like, well, Kanye, obviously, he's like a little bipolar. Yeah, so but he's a lot bipolar. I do agree with that. Like, a lot of things, I'm like, I just need to say this because I don't know if, how I feel about it. Like, I'll tweet a lot of stuff and I'll delete it immediately because I'm like, there's something about, like, the act of presenting that really clarifies your mind and your own opinions on things. It's like when you do, when you have a bit, you're like, I don't know if this is funny. Until I'm saying on so stage. So you say it in front of other people and you yeah. go, oh, this is? You're like, oh, no, it's not. Yeah, and then you notice like, okay, I, yeah, I don't exactly feel how I felt when I wrote it and like, why not? So, so yeah, the act of presenting. And that's why I'm like really glad I have like social media, even though it probably ruins my life and makes my brain really bad. I would say try, I try and pull away from checking it constantly. That's because, the thing that fucks Because I felt, I felt my brain get addicted to that. Yeah. Because when all of a sudden you go in and then you you always see those little red notifications, it feels good and you get that dopamine hit. Yeah, you see the numbers go up. But then you start to realize when it doesn't happen that you're doing it like reactively. And, and then when you don't see anything, it's almost like um, – have you have you ever done any like drugs, like any psychedelics or mm-hmm. like Molly or anything? Yeah, I've done shrooms okay. and acid. So have you done Molly before? Uh, once yeah, that I hated that. Oh, you did really? Yeah, I was oh, like, my best. brain hurt. I'm like, oh, I'm having a bad time. So, on it or after it? On it, I didn't even feel that much. On, you know, you know what? I think it was dampered by the fact that it was at this thing called Igloo Fest, which is, is a outdoor EDM festival in Montreal in January. So it's freezing cold. Oh, that doesn't sound like it'd be good. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like interesting. Kind of it like, sounds like it'd be interesting, but then you think about it is cold. Yeah, I ended up just talking to like French people by the fire for like a while. <laughs> and I was like, I'm high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to compare it even like to, to acid or anything. It's like that feeling, the, the, the going to your phone constantly and then trying to look for that is like that feeling when you start coming down off a drug. And you still want it to be there, but it's mm. going away. Yeah. So then you're like, no, 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 I want that feeling that I had earlier, but it's not the same. It's like that. Yeah. And so then your brain almost feels like empty. Do you know what I'm saying? 100%. It's, it's, like, it's like you're pushing a button, but like it's not working anymore. And you're going, what? No, no, no. Earlier today when I looked at my mentions, like I it's, I felt something. And yeah. now it's, Am I not funny anymore? Why yeah, do people yeah. not like this? Or like, yeah, do people not like me anymore? It's just weird. Yeah, then you start to think, I'm like... Because I don't know, because I have like 20 something thousand followers. Yeah. And so I'm like, wow, 20,000 people hate me, <laughs> which is like bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is like not good for your mind. Tw- yeah, yeah. It's, it, it can make, it allows you to seriously consider that 20,000 people have looked something that you wrote and then 
not reacted to it. You're like, oh, he's losing his edge. He's not funny. Yeah. Like, so who the fuck is this Which is something ass? that our brains are not wired for because oh, no. we were never meant to be in the presence of more than like 300 people. Yeah. And so 20,000, when in reality, most of those people don't look or probably didn't even see it. Yeah, yeah exactly. And some of them probably scrolled by and they saw it for a second and but then they like looked they just got distracted or whatever it is but then yeah. we all make it about us and but we do know that the worst kind of response is no response yeah that, i'd rather you i'd rather you hate my tweet and go this is fucking trash than you to not even give it an engagement as the word is called yeah it's bad for that, your brain i mean it's just straight it up is. it's very simple i like, think if you can think about it as a, like if you put it into a different um like if you separate it from your identity yeah. So if you separate, if you go, social media is like part of my job. It's part of me being a comedian. Um, I'll look at it business wise and see what does well, what's not doing well. Let me uh, think about it that way. But it's not tied to who I am. Yeah. That's where it can be okay. But as soon as it starts to, as soon as you allow it to start making you feel good and feel like I, that validation, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. At least the laughs validation on stage, it's a little bit different. Because you're like actually there. Exactly. And it's, it's like just, actually a human thing. Yes. It's, it's interaction. It's live. It's there with people. Whereas the social media also, we also, we all know that a lot of stuff on social media that is good doesn't get any traction and stuff that isn't good gets tracked. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like some things that are good that deserve to do well, like, like your ASMR video, that does well. You know, but that other stuff you're like, why it's just a girl shaking her ass getting three million views? You know what I mean? You go, I mean, okay. That deserves Actually, it, you also, know? you know what that is? But that sometimes it. it's not that good of an ass. You know what I'm and saying? Sometimes the shaking is not good. I'm like, look, you just have a big ass, but you can't dance. You don't know how to twerk. You don't have any muscle control. That does annoy me. I'm like, look, this person's bad at dancing. Yeah. That you should not be rewarded for not being good. Be like those, they have bad rhythm. Yes, 100%. Then there are some girls, the, some of those like famous twerking girls, like one of them is Russian or whatever, and th- those girls, phenomenal asses, but also phenomenal muscle uh, control. control. This they is can like m- artistry. They move one cheek at a time. They can go reverse. I truly They're don't know. sending more. I tried to learn how to twerk one afternoon. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I truly don't. I truly did. I'd watch a YouTube video. Just I'm like, how hard is it? Like, you couldn't do it? No. Do you have a big ass? I have a bigger ass than a more normal person. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I so have, have a black... You know what's actually funny? In high school, my senior superlative was best to walk behind. <laughs> Which I feel like they don't have that as a category anymore. That's, yeah, because it seems a little... <laughs> yeah, which one of <laughs> these me literal <laughs> minors has the best ass? And the <laughs> and the school board is just like, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's cool, yeah. Totally We're, fine. I'm going to go in and I'm going to sign my name, Mr. Johnson, right next to that. Hey, good for you, sport. You got a great ass for me I to I think they at. did think it was progressive because they had a boy and girl category for each yeah, one. And of, me and the other girl were like, nice, me and you, baby. Like, we yeah. have the best And then the photo in the yearbook was you both like looking behind, like just totally mm, yeah. s- <laughs> him squatting. Just, yeah, just like... Mm. <laughs> Yes, dig it. Look at this ass. I'm gonna fuck a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, holy shit. Um, you you brought something up in the beginning that I, I kind of wanted to end on because I think it was a very cool concept, which was just um, the power dynamics thing. Mm-hmm. So you think, what are other like? You said you think about it almost constantly. Yeah. So when you meet someone. Is it just always going on in your head? It's not like, at the forefront of my mind. It's not. I wouldn't say. Um, but how, so, but it's like hmm, I'm trying to feel, think like how to describe it. Like it, in comedy, it's much more there, and you probably experience like the way you. I'm assuming you experience in comedy. You're like you meet somebody. You're like, all right, this person's probably like ahead of me or behind me. Mm-hmm. They have these type of credits. They have this, that, and that. And it, like you know that you try to fight it. As much as you can, because you want to interact with somebody like as, as a, a human as a being. human. But there but is like, that power dynamic where you go if someone's up, you're like, I want to be cooler with this person because I see them as having more worth than someone that maybe doesn't have those. Well, I try not. To, I don't think about it in terms of worth. It's just something okay. that I know exists and it's in my mind. But it's like an act of practice, I think, to not um, like have that tr- try to taint your interaction. Yeah. But it's just something that I'm like, very aware of. So the same way that you're aware of in comedy, like if you meet someone, you know, you meet someone who's older than you, like, all right, they have this certain amount of power, but like you hear about their job, he's like, okay, they're probably here in this, and, like in terms of relation to you, and you think like maybe like, oh, how do they perceive me? And how, and like, just while you're talking to somebody, I'm like, is this affecting our interaction in any type of way? And you, I, it's more that like in person-to-person interaction, 
the way I try to be aware of it is like know all the dynamics that exist and try to like mitigate them so we could be more like equal. You know what Got I'm saying? It. At least on your side. You don't know how they're going to react. But on your side, you go, okay, you meet someone that is – let's just say you meet the owner of JFL, mm -hmm. right? They have the ability to throw you on. Yeah. So – but you don't want to be weird yeah. with them and have them – you don't want them to know – that you know who they are. Do you know what I'm saying? Or that you're changing who you are because of that. You want them to be like, I'm talking to Randall, and this is the same Randall that it would be whether I own JFL or I was just some random friend of a friend. Yeah. You want it like that. Like you want you want you don't you want to break down the barriers of um like right, you're the JFL person. And like I'd probably be like, Whoa, you're the JFL person? Like, that's crazy. You have so much like I hear about that all the time. Like you know, like I'm a comic, and it's like very interesting. Blah 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 yeah. blah. Because I like it just I want to like get it out of my brain. You want to address it. I want to address. Yeah. It. You want to say like, hey man, we're, I'm not going to ignore the fact that you own the most famous uh, premiere comedy festival, and I would like to be in it one day. So I'm going to put it out there right now, and then now we can talk as do humans. Yeah, exactly. Because if you try and ignore it, then it might like build in your mind. Yeah, it's like when you're in a relationship and there's a problem, and you guys are both trying to not talk about the problem mm -hmm. instead of being like, hey, we cannot keep going. Until we address this thing that's in yeah. both of our minds. And I think, like, when I say power dynamics, it makes it seem like maybe it's a bigger thing than it is. But, like, think about, like, probably for you, like, when mm. you, like, interact with a woman, because you're a six, seven. Yes. And you're like, all right, this is, like, a five, two woman. So she's probably, like, intimidated by, like, how tall I am, like, big I am. And so you, like, might make yourself seem a little more, like. For a while, I would always, in my life, bend over mm -hmm. and kind of make myself smaller to people. I realized that until I went to acting school and they were like, you got to stand up straight. I used to do that, too. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, even though I'm not that tall, but I would do that a lot. I think that's those are people that are not. That's, like, the people that feel like they don't have to prove something. Instead of them trying to make everyone know that they're. The in charge and strong instead they're like I, I want this other person to feel more comfortable yeah you know, there's those there's two type of people the guy that puffs his chest up to everyone they meet and you're like dude we're just talking and the guy that's like let me you know come down a little bit mm -hmm. like even last night i was talking to this girl and i was like i should sit down so you're not looking up at me but then i was too low so i ended up yeah. you know standing back up again but it's it's like a yeah the, the power dynamic thing is just I do think every interaction has it in there. Every, I mean, it's. I, I think it's like. I mean, it's inherent to me. It's just inherent in like everything that humans do with one another. Like it's that idea. Like everything is politics because everything is like power dynamics. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you can't connect to somebody as a human. But I think like it's good to be aware of how all that stuff works. Do you think it like uh, sullies in some interactions that you have because you're thinking about it, or I don't think so. Okay. I think it just is like. You know how I think about it. I think it might have at a certain point. Have you ever learned how to play an instrument? Yeah, guitar. Did you feel like after you learned that when you listen to music, you could like hear a lot of the the pieces of the song much more um, sharply? Like oh, I can hear the horns, I can hear the strings, I can hear, I can hear the lead guitar, I can hear the I could hear the uh, chorus, yeah, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I feel like for me, like after I I because I learned guitar too, and I was like really into it. And I feel like when I was starting to learn, uh -huh. when I listened to music, it was like it got in the way of me listening to music because I me too only heard all the disparate parts. Yeah, but, now a lot of times if I try and listen to a to a song too much, I'll hear the the snare, the bay. I'll hear all of them not as one. Uh, like, compo like one piece. I'll mm -hmm. hear them as all their separate parts. Yeah, and it kind of fucks it up because all of a sudden you're like, I can't hear the song anymore. I'm just hearing this one note in the background. And I think it's the same thing for me when I was like studying poli sci and like reading all these books about it. Is like I think for a little while it does fuck with your relationships or just relationships to any type of people or group or anything because you see. The, all these strings and all the relationships mm -hmm. and the power dynamics. But after a while, at least similar to me, like I started to be able to hear the music as a whole again. And you can, if you choose to like pick out these pieces yeah. and, but you're always kind of aware, but you can still like do both at the same time. You can like listen to the music, you can listen to a song, but you can also like critique it. Oh, okay. You get good enough to where you're not always focusing on it. Yeah. Like if something feels off, you might go, Oh, is something – like, if you're in a conversation, you're not first going to think about the power dynamic. But if something feels off, you're going to go, like, okay, okay what's me, happening? What's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, uh, do they feel something about me or do I – Yeah, and I think – I and I mostly apply – yeah, I get – yeah. I was going to say I mostly apply it to p p groups in, like, situations, but that's not true. I think I apply it to everything. Yeah. Do you – have you noticed uh, – 
people because it's not a huge deal, but for like our level of uh, like comedy and mm-hmm. where we are in our career, uh, going from three like you know, three thousand followers to all of a sudden twenty two thousand, and then having a video go viral, and then also being a writer on the Daily Show, have you noticed people treat you differently? Mm, not really that much i don't think okay um i like some people like i'll have more people reach out to me to do stuff do stuff yeah so they're yeah they're in a certain way that like i have like a bit more legitimacy mm-hmm. and i can see how that affects things but like on an interpersonal level i guess not but also at the same time i feel like i interact with the same people and i it's not like a huge jump you know yeah i feel I'm, okay. not like a, I'm not like a famous person. No, I no, just, I got you. But I mean, but for us, it's, for a lot of people, it's a big deal. You know, and yeah. For yeah. like us, if you think back to when before any of it, it's all because it's all relative to like where you're at. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Now all of a sudden, to you, you're like, if I had five hundred thousand, that'd be crazy. You know? But yeah, like, you're right. Someone you're right. that you know, but the, then someone up there, I they you know, to them, they're like, yeah, well, a million is where I want to get to. So it's all relative. But, yeah, but I would say, I would say, from like everybody who was like. In our like class of comedy, uh-huh. I don't feel like I hear that much That's different good. stuff. It's mostly just like if there's newer comics, like, oh shit, you're the guy who writes for the thing. I'm like, yeah. So they're like, they see me as pro- some value to you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but like everyone else, I'm just like, yeah, it's, I'm like the same guy. And you, they saw me how I was doing comedy a month ago, and I'm doing comedy at like Pratt or similar level. So they're yeah. like, yeah, it's it's Randall, and it hasn't changed how you think about yourself at all. Like you don't feel cool or like you don't feel better or to maybe give you like a surge of confidence to where you're like oh i was right i can do this did any of that happen um it's slowly turning that because like i feel like i ju- i'm starting to like get out of the imposter syndrome type mode because yeah, i'm like yeah, yeah. oh man i just got lucky with this video and i got lucky uh-huh. with this i got lucky with this which is all true i did get lucky with a lot of stuff and then yeah but, but- i think part of it like Part of luck is being prepared for when it happens. Mm-hmm. So it's like you put out videos for three years and then none of them hit. And then you didn't stop. You were prepared and had that video. And then when people came, you had a bunch of work to show them as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess I do feel slightly more confident. Okay. But um, yeah, slightly more confident, I would say. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. Feels good. What about girls, though? You girls? Getting get more girls? I have been. That's tight. That feels good. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with the Daily Show. Oh, uh, really? What do you think it is? I think it's just the non being like non performative and not trying to like impress people as much anymore. Oh, okay. like I'm just much more relaxed as a person, and I think that's maybe more attractive to people. Like I'm not always trying to like. Oh, I just how do I show you? Like how do favorite? I be yeah, what you like, want to? Yeah, I'm always. I'm trying so hard. Yeah, I kind of like peeled back a little bit. And that's good. Yeah, it feels good to not perform. Yeah, it's really it's a lot better. Except sometimes I do get self conscious. I'm like, am I fucking boring now? Because like I even this podcast, I'm like, I haven't been that funny. But uh, yeah, but the podcast isn't always about. We've had people that have been funny and uh, roof. Like I had roof shout out recently. Usama, I'm shout assuming. out Usama, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Some people come like people come on with different energies. It's also mm. like, like we sat down and there wasn't this energy of like bam, bam, boom, riff or whatever. And so I don't really. Like, I'm not going to try and force that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I want to get to know Randall and, like, what you're thinking and get into that whatever it is. It Word. doesn't have to be, you know, let's be really fucking funny. It's what I want is I want someone to come and listen to this, you know, hour and 45 minutes that we've been talking. Go like, oh, whoa. Sh- yeah, I know, right? It's a little bit of a time suck. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And they go, oh, I got into Randall's head in a way that's not just a 240 character tweet, you know? Got like, it. Oh shit, he presented something. Oh, that's kind of cool. He talked about power dynamics. Oh, he has like then they get to go. Then people, I think people listening to this will get to go. I know Randall much more than if he just was on a radio show. Do you know what I'm saying? For like you. 10 minutes and yeah. so it isn't always funny. And there are a couple funny moments, but my favorite kind of conversation is having funny moments and then also getting into really real shit. Like you like you know, some people, you know, you you get to, like, figure out, oh, they're, you know, they had fucked up family dynamics or, like, growing up poor or rich, like, affected them whatever way. But but it seemed like for you, you were like, hey, you know what, my, my family's pretty great. And, like, I knew I grew up, like, very uh, privileged and provided for, but I don't think it fucked up how I think about the world because you seem like you seem to have a very um, 
Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about that too in terms of like growing up with like money and privilege. I think about that a lot because it's very interesting when so when you're black and that happens because I was talking yeah, to a friend that? about this the other day because it's almost impossible to be um, very divorced from poverty at any stage of being black, even if you're okay. family. Because like my grandpa and grandma like were born in um, Mrs. like shitty Mississippi town and then they upgraded by going to Watts, which is worse than Compton. <laughs> yes, Watts is that's where the riots were. Yeah, and, like, you know, my dad lived through some of the riots, and, like, I still have, like, family that lives in South Central and, like, rural Ohio. And so, like, you kind of, like, will hear about, even if you don't experience things firsthand, you'll hear about how rough things can be and, like, your family that's struggling through stuff. So it's like this weird dissonance of like, you're doing fine, but like people who are like very close to you are struggling and you like pr provide for them or like family helps them out in some way. So it's that way of like, you can never, it's an advantage quote unquote and be able to like understand people or you're like, it's very, it's a little bit harder to be like completely in la la land because you're like, Oh yeah. I have like grandparents who like were immediately like living through, Still, absolute travesty still on food stamps yeah. or not not still but you they, know what i mean like yeah. not too long ago but extremely hard times like my dad like extremely hard times your dad He's, was yeah he grew up in like the hood so how did he get to where he is now um he got this like really great scholarship to go to uh where they paid for his college and grad school wow and he's like yeah just really good student so he just got out and like him and my uncles and aunts they all did really well like my grandparents like really just kind of like set the stage for them so that they really, yeah, they sacrificed themselves, or like they really tried to make it so that they were set up for yeah, success. Yeah, they just like worked really hard. It was like very classic American dream. Got very lucky at the same time, but uh, so yeah, you're kind of like you're the degrees of separation from hardship are smaller, even if you come from like a wealthy family do when you, you're a black person. Do you think you feel more guilty about being wealthy? maybe because you're black and you know how your community maybe is not as many of them like did you, I, you have guilt about it like not uh, like survivor's guilt but do you know what i'm saying yeah not survivor's guilt i i mean i i feel guilt in the same way that i feel like anyone who didn't work for, for yeah. the things they inherit do but you kind of have to like get rid of that because it's not useful and it's like all right if i have this um power and resources like what can i do to help people yeah and i'm still trying to figure that out like you know I'll donate money and stuff like that and you're 26 you know what yeah. I mean? like you can figure it out you've got time yeah, yeah. so but um no not that much guilt it's more of just like um no it's just perspective you're like okay like you, you just get you just see how it's like i was talking about at the before like I, it's kind of hard because like I'm th I'm messing messaging meshing politically like I don't think anyone should be that rich I'm like very much like pretty on the left why not um, just because I think you should like people should pay more taxes and there's be uh, like more money in government programs like healthcare for all single payer I'm like very much about all that okay stuff. you're right but but if someone but, you know is Jeff Bezos shouldn't he deserve if he's creating Amazon shouldn't he deserve to have thirty billion dollars I don't think so. Really? No, I don't think anyone should have more than a billion dollars. But then what's going to be the incentive for someone to to make Amazon if they don't think maybe I can get all the way up there? I think if one billion dollars is not, not enough, enough for you, I know you're yeah. a psychopath. True. And there's people who like start businesses and like I I don't think that's the only motivation people have to make things. I agree. Like I think there's like like doctors and like other countries where they have very high tax rates and they're still very good at their jobs and they're like, I know I'm not going to be as rich as maybe an American doctor would, but they're like still good. I just think the potential to get very wealthy is going to attract the best people because there's going to be the good people. Like we, I think people are inherently good, but I also think not having money clouds a lot of that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so I think that Making it so that you can make a shit ton of money is not only going to attract the people that are going to do it no matter what, but it's also going to attract the people that, unfortunately, they're going to be people that are amazing doctors and are also very greedy. Now, we could choose to either not have them be doctors or allow them to make a shit ton of money 
and also create the forefront of orthopedic surgery. Do you know what I'm saying? I see that perspective. Yeah. I totally see it. But another thing that I, like a, another avenue that I think about is like, like I think about my dad um, because he talks about there's this other guy in his grade who was like one of the smartest, he says like one of the smartest people he's ever met. Uh-huh. And he didn't get like, his, like he had just said something in his life go wrong, like outside of his control that made it so he couldn't like, escape in the same way okay and he started this might not be the best analogy i'll i'll remove that analogy I'll, what i'll say is i feel like the benefits that would come from giving other people more of an opportunity mm-hmm. w- creates more seeds for greatness than um the striving for extreme wealth you know what i'm saying so it's like you have this incentive to strive for like you can make 70 billion dollars mm-hmm. but within that is kind of inherent to the system is that like, all right, there's not going to be as much money in these programs. So a lot more people are going to fall through the cracks. And a lot more people are going to be constantly worried and thinking about their survival where they otherwise could be using their minds creatively to create a bunch of more yeah, businesses true. and dev- devices and innovations. Mm-hmm. So I was like, if you can give those people more time resources to create things themselves, I feel like that would be more powerful than having just the um, extreme wealth uh, incentive. You're right. I mean, I, I don't think. I also agree with you. If a billion dollars isn't enough for you, yeah, you're 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 kind of a psycho. Like, I don't have an issue. Like, I don't have an issue with someone really wanting that. I don't think it's going to lead to their happiness. If money is all you really want, and that's your kink, that's the thing that you need, then I'm okay with you. Uh, not embracing it, but but driving after it and um, trying to achieve that. But I think some kind of mesh between providing some safety net and ability for all those people, but then also allowing the ability for the people that really want to not only succeed, but succeed in a capitalistic way to where they can get all the way up there. That's also still a potential. Because I think taxing the shit out of the wealthy is going to just, one, make them leave and... To, I don't know if it sends the right idea in my mind to everyone, which is which goes like, don't try and make too much money because then the government's gonna take more of it. You know, I like what's the? I see that, but where my mind goes um, off of that is like if there's any historical precedent. And I remember in the I think it was the fifties when we had one of our higher tax rates. I can't remember exactly where it is, but it was definitely like. Mm-hmm. Um, potentially above 70%. But wow. it was also, like, the 50s was, like, one of the most innovative times in American history. So if people, like, at that time, with that much of a tax rate, while you're creating, you know, that's, like, right after you create Medicare and mm-hmm. uh, Medicaid and all these new government programs and kind of, like, shift Social Security and kind of, like, shifted the way our economy works to a more... Um, to provide more of a social safety net for people and you're doing those taxes and you still are, you know, that was like one of the booming eras of us growth. So if I'm like, if, so if it's worked before, then like I'm willing to give it another try. Okay. What would you, what, like what taxes would you want on the rich? The exact rate? No, no, not the ballpark or like where, how would you want it to go? Like, okay. So what's too rich for you? Like, it's, is it, someone making ten million dollars? Is it, because you know, if you want to be in the entertainment industry, at some point you might have the opportunity to make five million dollars in a year. You know, that's true. How much of that do you want to? If you worked your ass off and you really got there, how much of that do you want to give away? Um, I would be like whatever amount that makes it so the average person can have their basic needs met. Yeah. met and have enough to like live a life of dignity, which I don't know exactly how much that is, but I'm like, yeah, I think sim- and similar to what we were talking about before, like power. Um, cause you know, we always talk about freedom in yeah. America and I feel like money's freedom, money's freedom. Yeah. And so you need enough money to be able to like, not have to be a slave to your job to not have to be terrified of one sickness, like ruining your family. And, yeah. Like, to have that weight above your head all the time. And, like, I know, like, with that weight, like, my dad talks about it all the time. Like, my grandma, she died very early. And a lot of it was just, like, the stress of having to maintain a home and have all these um, things 
that are complete uncertainties about you and like living in a rough neighborhood and not having health care necessarily for your kids. And so it's more of just like to have those basic needs met and to live a life where you're not under constant fear of things that shouldn't, in my opinion, shouldn't like destroy you. You shouldn't be worrying about health care. Yeah. You shouldn't be worrying. Yeah. Of- and yeah, you should just like... You, I, he's not like my favorite candidate, but he played Andrew Yang. Well. No, uh, oh, Pete gonna... Buttigieg. Okay, yeah. It's the and it's like a political science idea. It's like there's idea of freedom from things. It's like I'm I want freedom from the government to not like take my land, to not take my guns, to not do this thing. But there's like the th- positive version of freedom that I feel like people don't think about enough, which is like the freedom to do things, like the the freedom to change your job and not have to yeah be beholden to one career, one place because like they maintain your health care. They have control over your life in this capacity. Yes. And the freedom to, you know, pursue an education and not have to be in debt for the rest of your life. Like we still yes. have like, you know, we know a lot of, we know comedians that like have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. Gracie just has so much debt. Still. Yeah. And that impacts like, okay, well she can't um, be the best comedian she can be because there's these things the that you're like, it sh- you should have, you should not be in debt two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but I think that's a, a whole another issue because I think part of it is the uh, colleges and universities taking advantage of people and mm-hmm. the fact that you can get easy loans and then the colleges spike up their prices because they know they'll get the money. Um, and when in reality, like when my dad went to college, it was like ten thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and he could. He could, even though he had to take out a, a couple of loans, it was like, like pay off. You can see yourself paying. It yeah, back. my dad was like, I paid off my school in like two years. I worked my ass off for two years. That's, I'm okay with that. Yeah. you know what? You do that. And that's what I'm saying. Yes. I was like, th- it's like that's a reasonable. Yes. Like even if I'm more like towards, even if I'm like a public education, like should be free type person. Yes. I was like it's like absurd how much weight just an average person's under. And you can't pursue a life that's reason. You can't. It's like unreasonable for the average person to pursue anything outside of just like straight drudgery for the rest of your life. Yeah, because they have to pay off. Yeah, they're they're beholden to a bank that they owe one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I talked to someone who graduated grad school, and they're like, "Oh, I was talking to a dentist, and uh, my dentist. He was. I was asking him about dental school, and and a lot of people don't know that." Dentists, like they, all of the, they're all like kind of entrepreneurs because all of their practices are private practices that, unless they work at a big dental um, office, it's usually just them. But what people don't think about is that they have all the um, materials, all the the technology, the machines. They have to buy all of that out of pocket, yeah. and it's not cheap. So, like, in order for them to start up their career they have to first go to school for like two hundred thousand dollars and then buy all this machinery an x-ray machine uh a, a table that can put someone back the lighting the, it's the if you want to get a hypersonic uh like tooth cleaner a polisher all that shit you have to be able, like a dryer for the cement all this shit that you don't think about they have to invest probably 70 g's just in order to open up the place so then mm-hmm. they're in the hole for all of that and that's on top of the loans you have to go to school exactly so yeah. he was telling me he's like dude when i'm this guy, you know, I graduated and I had $250,000 of debt. I was like, fuck, dude. And isn't that insane? Like, only rich people can be dentist? Like, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Straight up. It's like, you okay, you just, or you just have to work, you just have to work nonstop. And then all of a sudden, you don't like being a dentist anymore because you're not doing it because you love teeth. You're just trying to get in as many people as you can because all you're thinking about are the loans that are on your back. Yeah, and that makes you probably like maybe worse at your job because yeah. you're just like stressed out. And also you lose... And you're wh- trying to cut corners and shit, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. And you're trying to, or you're trying to do what a lot of dentists do, which is they will uh, suggest more um, ca- like cavities, more crowns, more surgery to make the money so that they can pay that off or just make money in general. Yeah. So they suggest that because they... There's a lot of uncertainty and sometimes uh, like fraud in terms of what you need or what you like. I, mean, I guess malpractice is the word for it. And dentistry, which is like very 
I just remember I read this article and I was like, holy shit. And I talked to him yeah. about it. I was like, dude, I respect you so much more. Not like, I already re- respect the dentist, but yeah, no, th- that number one, I told him that. I was like, dude, the fact that you came in, you're like, hey, your teeth look fine. I think all your cavities, it's not a big deal. Just brush a little bit more, use, use floss, and that's it. And I, I remember I went, oh, this guy, if you really wanted to, could suggest that I get two cavities filled. Yeah. Because another dentist that I went to a year earlier, I went to him. He said I had three cavities and needed to get them all filled. And I just didn't p- feel like paying $650, so I just left. And then just for a year, I went, you know what? When I go next year, I'll have the money saved up. I'll do it. And then I just decided, I went, you know what? Let me go to a different dentist just in case. Let me see. And let me not mention the cavities. So I didn't mention them at all. I went in. Um, he took the x-rays. and He's like, your teeth look great. You're good. All these, the fillings still look good. You're fine. And I kind of looked at him. I was like, I don't need it. He's like, no, no, you're fine. See you in six months. And I remember I told him, I went, dude, I respect you so much because I know, I know that you could do a couple. It's like, a, it's like gold in my mouth. For sure. Yeah. He could do a couple mini cavities that he didn't really need to do. It takes him about an hour of work. And then he makes $600 off of it. You know what I mean? He could have done that. But instead, the because half the time dentists will say that there's like micro cavities. And then if you just brush a little bit better and you don't eat as much sugar potentially, I think they can... Um, feel themselves out or they, 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 uh, because there's like, they, they won't develop into, it's like, there's a potential for a cavity. You know what I mean? Like they Mm -hmm. see one building and then if you catch it early enough on, it'll work itself out. Interesting. I didn't know that. And, uh, a a couple of dentists had told me that. And then he had talked about it one. I was like, Oh shit. Like, especially because I know how much money you owe. Like I respect you for that. That's for real, right. yeah. and that's why I gave him a fucking five star review on Zocdoc, baby. You know what I'm saying? Zocdoc. I don't usually do it, but for that, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll I need give him the review. Dentist, my teeth are probably terrible. Yeah, but yeah. it's scary, man. Dentists. I know. I'm terrified every time. Like, do, uh, do you get really? Yeah, I'm just like not like because the procedure is like oh, my mouth's falling apart. I'm gonna need dentures. I suck. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, I just I have so much shame around my teeth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, have, you have good teeth though. I think yeah. they look fine, but the, I have holes. The, and the, oh, me too. I grind, do you grind your teeth? I don't grind my teeth. I, I heard my teeth are like shaped weird, so it's like give, is more likely to produce cavities. That's what I heard. Interesting. I don't know what's true. That's probably a dentist that's trying to get money out of you. Trying to fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> and trying to fuck Oh, yeah. And that's, I meant, yeah, but you know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But maybe also trying to fuck you. You know, he's got the gas. I don't know what happened when I was asleep. Dude, you know what? You're asleep and you're like, I just felt super relaxed after. He's like, I saw you on Instagram. And <laughs> I love that you're a queer eye <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck that's amazing that's uh i uh i could talk to you for another hour about political shit and i, I definitely want to have you back but that's a that's a great place to end ah, it, dude fuck I, yeah i'm late for something oh I totally fuck forgot. dude oh shit all right nah, yo, it's all uh, find randall online at <laughs> um just randallotus.com randallotus tv for my socials great awesome randallotus tv wow what a great branding and uh you, you guys already know fucking rate review share the episode let's go be posted on youtube in a week all that good stuff randall's gotta get out of here Uh, Take it easy, psychos. We'll talk to you soon.